What is up, my dudes? It is not Wednesday, but it doesn't matter because it's time for the Not So Subtle Podcast. That's right. You broke the cardinal rule. You never talk before I introduce you. <laughs> God damn it! Don't even laugh. Okay, guys. Jordan, you're you're on. It's the last straw. Oh, you said my name. The beast has been unleashed. All right. So <laughs> so my name is Dan Point. Jordan. Hello. We, Jordan Miller. We already know who you are. <laughs> Coulter Potter. Hello. Thank How you is it for going? thank you for knowing your place at the beginning of this intro. Oh, thank you. You're here. I didn't realize you were here. You didn't speak <laughs> I'm here. Out. If we introduce anyone, they'll just show up. I guess. That's, That's right. What I'm Look, Hitler, how's it going? No, we can't do that. Um, guys, Guten this Tag. is... <laughs> oh, no. Heim- Heimrich Himmler. Oh. What are you doing here, bud? Heinrich. Heinrich. My, Let's keep digging my the hole, boys. Keep Bulls. digging. Uh, guys, We probably this shouldn't is... have done that. I might cut it. Look, <laughs> you should just leave it in. <laughs> Watch my descent into mayhem. Uh, guys, this is the Not So Subtle Podcast. What where every week... It? What episode is it? 31? That's right. Yeah. Uh, season two of Not So Subtle. Yeah. Actually. Uh, it's exciting times here, guys. Our viewership, it's flying through the it's, roof. <laughs> the <laughs> numbers. Be higher. Okay, actually, though. Highest numbers they've ever been. I was going to tell you guys this earlier, but what I'll, I'll just say now. So, uh, at work, uh, <clears throat> we have a, a security guard. Uh, we, we have random security guards all the time, but we have a really cool security guard. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to dox her. I, I won't say her name, but she What's knows who she is. Uh, yeah, a female security guard. Who would have thunk? Um, no, but, like... The holes. No, like... Go on. <clears throat> it is... She even acknowledged that it was rare. You can get my phone. But, uh, it's not like she has, like, a gun or, like, is gonna shoot anyone or do anything crazy, like, in the store. Like, mm-hmm. she's just there to deter people from stealing because <laughs> it's very easy to to thief from you're gonna cut that out where i work Listen, this isn't distracting at all please <laughs> go on <laughs> when you my, my workplace there's a lot of editing <clears throat> being uh, done right now. a lot of kermit um this store uh it's very easy to thieve from so uh anyway so she's there and we were talking about the podcast and uh i mentioned that i had a podcast whatever it was and then and then i had the business card which looks swag as fuck when you pull out a business card for a podcast it's pretty cool right so I've given that to a few of my coworkers already, but I bring out the business card and she's like, wait, I've heard of this podcast. No. I'm, no, I'm not kidding. She was like, I've heard of oh? this podcast. And I was like, I was like, no, you haven't. I was like, <laughs> there's no, no way. There's like, there's literally no way. Like, where is not a popular podcast. Like, there's not a lot of people listening to this. And she's like, no, no, I've heard about this before. Three boys, three nights, one like, dream. I mean, like, I was like, that's, that would be really cool if you had actually heard of us before, but I don't think you have. So uh, if you're out there, Hello. I still don't know if you've ever heard of this before mm-hmm. because I find it incredible that anyone on the planet. You didn't press her further. Like, no, well, how did you know? I was like, no, how do you know us? No, but she was like, I think she just said that she heard about it from another podcast or that like she had like the name sounded familiar or something, which is possible, I guess, like through Facebook advertisements yeah. or something, but I don't know. So anyway, I thought that was kind of odd because we're always joking about how no one knows about the podcast the or, or listens to it, but... Apparently she's heard it. Apparently she's heard of the name at least through the grapevine. Maybe that's, the maybe the logo that's uh, was that's a good familiar start. or something. So, um, kind of funny. It's Dames. interesting. Oh, excuse me. I can't say that. No affiliation, um, guys. This is not so subtle. We talk about games, movies, pop culture, not anime. Definitely not anime. Although it's a taboo. <clears throat> later, when we s- we're gonna talk about Comic Con later. Uh, I will have some anime to talk about from that because that's what I'm going there for. So mm. maybe next time we talk, I will have some anime to speak of. Probably going to be some merchandise, but. Amine. <clears throat> corner. ECCC Corner. Corner. Guys, uh, since the last podcast, yeah. I went under the needle mm-hmm. and I got a tattoo. I didn't even see <laughs> it. Just kidding. Um. So. And I'm, I'm here Rangers to tell the tale. Call sign. Yeah, that just go like this. What ranger are you? Yeah. Uh, Speak blue, carefully. The blue don't, ranger. Don't say red. Okay. <laughs> Speak carefully. <laughs> Tread carefully. Tread lightly. Also. Tread, Tread lightly. Which one are you? Oh my gosh! I'm Tread lightly. The white ranger. Okay. <laughs> white wing wolf. You're the white white corner. <laughs> not not like because of the color, you know, just because of who he is as a person. I mean, sure, I don't know anything about Power Rangers, so I was actually just saying blue because I like the color blue. I don't even know if there's a blue ranger. There a blue ranger. Okay. 
There's one of every color of the rainbow. Is there a purple ranger? Is there... You know what? I'm not sure if there's a purple ranger. And one of the there's a yellow. there must there's be. There's a red. There's a green. There's, there's a, a white. There's a black. There's a tarnished beige. <laughs> there's a... Smoke orange <laughs> ranger. <laughs> Sky blue ranger. Robin's there. egg blue ranger. Robin's egg blue. <laughs> they had like... There's a mac and cheese. What if they just had Crayola ass names? Yeah. <laughs> Crayola ranger. <laughs> The, the Azure Ranger. That actually be a really cool. That'd be lit. Megazord Crayola. Um. So, guys, we usually watch a, a wacky film and talk about it on this podcast. Usually. We didn't. We didn't do that this week. It's we just didn't not do feasible. It. We didn't do it. And look, I'm not apologizing for it. <laughs> I don't feel bad about it. We'll do, we'll get oh, to I, it eventually. I kind of do. I mean, do mostly you? just because I want to get this one out of the way so we can watch another movie. That's but. true. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sure, but. Not that I don't want to watch uh, The Seven Samurai. It's just I want to get through them. You know, I want to see some new ones in there. Sure, yeah. You don't want to watch it. I get that. A lot of the fun of the wacky film list is the randomness of not knowing what you're going to get. Yeah. And when you yeah. know it's the same movie for weeks upon weeks. It just could take some of the fun out. I need that. The I novelty is gone. Yeah. Look, we could always pull another movie. We're not. But we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we should watch the movie. We should. Um... Go on. It is the week of E C C C C C C C C Emerald City Comic Con. Emerald City Comic Con, cats, cars, and Crayola crayons. That's right. And uh Cats, Cars, three, Cradle Star. Three Galactica. billboards on the way to E C C C C. Uh we have our correspondent, Colton P. Potter. That's right. But are we uh, gonna do <coughs> lightning round first? We are, but I think okay. but that I'm is sneak but, preview. But look, it's it, that's a big topic. Um, so that's probably going to be, you know, one of the, it's going to be the meat of the episode. And then we're going to talk some video jams, mm -hmm. but before any of that, don't skip ahead. Listen to what we're going to say. Lightning round. Coulter, <laughs> go. Why are you what texting? What if I just had, it? well, I'm trying to let Shout out to Elf, oh my God. other people in this oh, yeah, let's, building let's, know let's about my text. Mine. Yeah. Let's text and not pull up. Shout out to Elf. Listen, it's my important God. for the podcast for me to do Elfster, this. what up? All right, guys. Listen, if you're part of Elfster.com's uh, upper hierarchy of Echelon, upper echelon. Uh, please reach out to us. We adore your website. That's right. Please reach out. We <laughs> now, love guys, if this is your first rodeo, and I sure hope it isn't, because, boy, you're get bucked off you've that missed Bronco a lot. Real fast, uh, bud. Elfster.com provides us with, uh, let me see, don't say the title of it. <laughs> Uh, you, sure, there's no chance. Uh, we sure, a surefire way to something. Uh, it'll, it'll, it's a lightning, a batch of lightning round questions that'll have your coworkers shooting from the hip. That is the end part. Yeah. Uh, basically, the batch is not in there. I don't know. You got most of it though. Look, I was real close. Uh, guys, there's gonna be some lightning round questions. We don't have a lot of time to answer them. <laughs> We're gonna answer them. They're lightning round. We are timed. Keep score this time. That's right. And so. We're going to answer them as fast as we can while also providing uh, funny banter at the same time. Okay. I, ca I can't promise I want you part. to say at least two funny things during this <laughs> section, Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> You're setting me up for failure, but I do my best work under pressure. So <laughs> That's right. All right, champions. Tapas or pasta? I don't tapas. know what tapas is. They're like Spanish appetizers. Uh, They're basically just appetizers. I'm going to go with pasta. I first learned about... Ta I, I hit my mic. Uh, excuse me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I first learned about tapas in uh, Home Ec. Are they like Miss? <laughs> <laughs> Miss I, wanted, I was gonna say it, Miss yeah, Kermit. You were Miss Kermit, uh, beautiful green woman. Um, <laughs> green is the most beautiful color. No, slimy yeah. as uh, the whole Shrek she, she, as the swamp she crawled out of. <laughs> Yeah, so I learned about it there, and then uh, I think we made, like, some crappy-ass versions Top, of tapas. tapas. I mean... There's one that's, like, bread, like... Uh, so is that just... Is it just a term for appetizers? Uh, n no, it's, like, specific, like, cultural food, like dim sum. I feel sum. really bad that... Okay. But not like dim sum. Sure, just yeah, but, like, in same, the same yeah. vein. Okay. Yeah, except it's entrees. Like, small little thingies. Interesting, Okay. Um, I would I don't just know. bring up the whole Wikipedia and just read it off to you, but don't, doesn't matter we don't, at all. Look, it's a lightning round question. We've already spent too much time. Boom. Are you starts. shooting from the hip yet? I will be soon. <laughs> I'm waiting for Jordan to shoot from the hip at least twice. I'm, loading, this, I'm loading, the right I'm loading the barrels right now. I'm loading them up. You're loading the barrels, getting ready to fire one. I'm going to fire some funnies <laughs> at you. 
Guys, ask permission or beg forgiveness. We already know the answer. What? Definitely ask per- Well, neither. I don't like doing either, but ask permission. I don't really get this question. That kind of surprises me. Really? Well, I mean, I, would it, I ever it beg depends for on what. <laughs> I would do I, I, neither of those things. Okay. It depends on the situation, of course. But... I think the setup is that you would, it's implying that you're going to do something and like, so you ask for permission before or afterwards you already do it and then that's when you face the consequences. Uh, I would ask permission because I'm a upstanding citizen yeah i mean it depends it depends on the situation that's tough for me because i hate doing both of those things that's like not that i not that i no i shouldn't say i don't like having to do either of those things Mm -hmm. i don't like being in a situation where that's like demanded of me but i would do it of my own accord if you're in a situation where you literally have to beg for forgiveness, that's pretty dire. Yeah, and you like, made mistakes. That would you be like that mistake. would be like man, like you're about to get like shot or something. Like yeah. you like talk to the, you talk some smack to the wrong guy at the bar and he pulls a knife on you and you're like, I'm so sorry, I don't do it. <laughs> Yeah, but like in that, that situation, you wouldn't be asking for Academy permission. Academy Award winning Dane LaForge. <laughs> that, that was Randall me begging Bond. for forgiveness. Yeah. You wouldn't ask permission like a to him beforehand that's the situation it's either something you have to ask permission for and if you don't then afterwards you beg for forgiveness oh the thing that pops in my head know. which was the last time i probably heard this phrase was when mega 64 is talking about how they film their like on the scene videos like out in the city or whatever and i feel like that's a good example where yeah like you're supposed to ask for permission from the people to like film there blah blah, blah but if you just do it and then they kick you out, like they're not going to make you delete the footage or whatever. Yeah. So it's like always better to just uh, beg for forgiveness, except yeah. they're not going to beg for forgiveness. They're just going to leave. So yeah, that's yeah. It makes more sense. But okay. I think we've exhausted that one. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> I will never beg. Just kidding. Uh, if the toilet, I pa- will not beg. <laughs> The toilet paper nice. roll is really low, but not completely out. Do you replace it or leave it for someone else? Really mm-hmm. low, but not completely out? Why would you f- replace it? You're wasting paper. Well, I think I, it's saying well, you use it and no, then it's no. like empty and then you... Sometimes... Well, we'll actually, have to discuss that too. Okay. Sometimes what I'll do... Uh, I, and I've seen just not use this toilet paper been done point. before. I just use my hand. No, yeah. but uh, like if you... You lick your hand and, and then... <laughs> and I lick my hand and then it has the, the better lubrication and better uh-huh. like kind of... Yeah. yeah. So it's... It, it sticks. It makes sense. It makes sense. It does. I've thought about it. Um, No, but like if you... If there's a little bit left on the roll, then take the roll off and like leave it on the counter. Like if it doesn't have that much mm-hmm. and then just start fresh with the new one. Mm-hmm. Sure. Because... What do you do with the old one? Well, like, if there's a little bit left, then eventually you know that someone else is going to have to do it. So it's the respectful thing to do to put the new one on. And then you leave the old one that has a little bit left on it on the counter. Mm-hmm. Or maybe just you exhaust that one at that point and then just throw it away. Yeah, I feel like that's even another thing you have to deal with, though. It's just like, to me, it's like, okay, it ran out, replace it. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's all. Sure, but like, but if it's already that close, you could put the new one on, leave the old one on the counter. And then that way, if there's still some when you when you're done whoever comes in next can just throw that one away and they don't have to worry about putting a new one on. But they that's do true, have to worry about throwing yeah, it away. Yeah, they do have to but worry that's about still dealing less with the tiny do. bit left. Is it? I mean... It's less to, it is <laughs> less to You know what's less to do? Just use it and then just leave the empty one there and just get your business done and leave. And then just let them... Then they have to deal with putting in the new one on and, and throwing the other one away and your hands are clean in more ways than one. But, so you're saying, like, if you're going to do something at all, you may as well just do it for them? No, I'm saying just don't do anything. Yeah, for he was that. saying just don't do it at all. I don't like that. Don't replace That's it. just not respectful. Is that <laughs> actually what you go with? No, I mean, I would use up the toilet paper and then replace it, but mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just saying you could just not do I that, guess. you know? Look, I re- don't really care. I'm not, I'm not going to, like, I won't ever have that moment where I'm like, if I come in and there's a little bit of paper, or like a little bit of toilet paper left on the roll i'm not gonna be like who the fuck didn't swap this out when they were done before like i don't care <laughs> just bring it out like look at this yeah, like, look at this <laughs> there's approximately one square left you think i can wipe my ass with this huh <laughs> think you this think is this gonna is get enough? all you waddle out you're just like you think this is enough <laughs> you think i'm one wipe jimmy <laughs> <laughs> think i'm a one wipe charlie yeah honestly if there was like no sponsor very no little sponsor, left sure. i would just throw the old one away it's not worth saving that's like fun. one square of toilet paper i mean Listen. Look, technically, you're wasting it. Yeah, I'm sorry. How do you feel about that? It's, if it's like I'm two sorry. 
or three squares, I'm fine with wasting. If it's enough to use it, I mean, if it's like one square, I'm like, I'm not gonna fucking use this, just throw it away. I was thinking of something the other day, you know how uh, people will say, can you spare a square, like, underneath the little, like, thing to the other stall when I'm you're gonna in the be honest, bathroom? I've never heard, never heard of that, that no ever one's, in my life. I haven't heard, heard that. No one has ever said, can you spare well, a square? Yeah, no, people don't actually do that, because how often do people be like, um, I have no toilet paper, can you give me some? Never. never. Literally, no one would ever I would put themselves in that situation. You, but what if there's no toilet paper in the You're thing? fucked. It's a game over. <laughs> you <laughs> pluck your <laughs> pants and walk out with a dirty ass. It's you're game f- over. <laughs> you're fucked at that point. It's like, well, guys, I'm so- you, just stay, you just stay there. and You just cry. You just sob in the stall. You cry. You just cry. All right, you guys are hitting them with the jokes, but okay. let's be real. When <laughs> when there's no toilet paper and there's someone in the next stall, you're you're asking. That would be my absolute last. Resort. <laughs> That's very rare because usually the stalls have like extra uh, toilet paper in there. Anyway, At least so. one or they two. They do. Yeah. They've thought about that. It's very unlikely. It's never do. happened to me. If I was at it's, an establishment that didn't have extra toilet paper in their stalls, I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. I'm calling the police. <laughs> no, look. In 24 years on this planet, that's never happened. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I'm just saying, it's if not it did happen, happen, if you'd have if to ask. Did. Look, it's not... And the other thing is, I don't go poop in public, so uh, yeah, I'm never going to have to worry about that. What What if you did? What What if? If I had diarrhea, that would be the only time. Mm. Like, honestly, that's the only time I would ever go poop in public. Okay. 100%. <clears throat> so, hopefully, they would have toilet paper that time, because that you, doesn't sound I too I hope fun. so. Okay, Otherwise. but my, my point with that was saying, can you spare a square is like really just one square like if they hand you one square like, like bro yeah, like, no, all right I, thanks I man champ look i meant a few squares yeah, yeah. <laughs> i meant, I meant quite upwards a few of 10 squares <laughs> they divvy it out one two here's three. here's a question how many squares of toilet paper do you <laughs> think you a- actually use on an average we're spending average so much time on the toilet it paper. depends on the uh ply of the toilet jesus paper. christ on the ply yeah the ply okay. absolutely does matter uh, What's the num? What's like the, the like? You need the, at least two. There's no two limit ply. on how high. Okay. It can go. If Just there's one ply, I'm one? literally gonna fold it myself into a two ply. <laughs> what sheet? about one? One ply is like the kind that like uh is the fucking dust. prisons gave us yeah, when we were like younger. School, school, no, prison. The prison. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, I misspoke. I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, they give us like they give us the worst toilet paper possible. Mm-hmm. Like that is the worst toilet paper. It's bad. And look. No it's one should bad. have to go through that. No one should ever have to do that. And it's bad because, one, it's so inefficient that you're going to end up using more of it. Mm-hmm. Just splurge a little bit. Get the two-ply, at least. Look, we didn't go to school in fucking Compton. We went to school in, uh, in an affluent neighborhood. <laughs> sure. <I laughs> That's mean, right. I Somewhat. Wouldn't. They weren't bad schools. I mean, I feel like they could have. App- they could definitely afford two-ply toilet paper. Skimp on the chocolate milk. We don't need chocolate milk. I'd rather have two ply toilet paper than yeah. chocolate milk. I'd rather have chocolate milk than two ply toilet paper. Are you serious? Yeah. Over you can one, make, over one ply. You can make extra ply toilet paper. But then you're just toilet. wasting it. It's not my fucking. It's the school's money at that point. Who cares then? It's their toilet paper. Dude. Fuck them. You care about wasting the school's toilet paper. No, yeah, I care about wasting up. toilet paper. You don't general. care about wasting. I don't care about school paper. at all. I have. <laughs> I'm, I would gladly waste their money, but it's just I would. The experience of using two ply toilet paper is so much better than having. It's is better than chocolate to- milk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's look. It's a luxury. Okay, can we move on, please? Yeah, absolutely. I'm no. tired you of talking. You would still have toilets. regular. Okay, milk. now another question for you guys. Just kidding. <laughs> look, how um, big is your average? One poop? ply or two ply? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, tell me the length and girth of your tell average dump the length in. and girth. <laughs> wow, that was a weird laugh. All right. Um, how wow, many? That's just so nice of you. How many redheads are you friends with? <laughs> Zero. A few. No, Damn. I <laughs> um, I don't know. Ed Sheeran's all right. <laughs> Ed Sheeran. My best friend Ed. Also, there's not a lot. It's not a whole lot. Look, it's not, not for any particular reason. How many do you meet on average? Less than one. I'd like to meet more. Than one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Um, Statistically, plus on one. average, there's one. a manager at my work who's who's redheaded, who's a great guy. Okay, so, cool so you guy. have at least one redhead friend. Sure, I don't. I mean, he's, he's an acquaintance. Yeah, my dead buddy. Yeah. I would call him a friend, but he's a manager, so I don't know if like I can even say that. Redhead redemption, man. That's right. I'm just pulling him out. You're going in. You got the funny. You today. can mark one down for me. <laughs> Look, I'm still waiting for Jordan to fire twice from the hip. I've had plenty of... Uh, You've barely fired uh, once. Free-firing funnies all the time. 
You've been like you've uh, been warning shot. Yeah, okay. it's Ping. been you've been firing I'm, off rounds, but you hasn't you. you have been shooting from the hip. The big though. one's coming, boys. Get ready. <laughs> All right, get ready. There's boys. probably not m- too many more lightning questions left. There's m- an unlimited There's, number of them. There are quite a few, but we're not going to do all. We're of not going to do that many. We're we have to save everyone. some for uh, for the children. This okay. says, "What's the type of triangle with two equal sides called again?" This is just isosceles. Yes, that's not a two lightning equal round sides question. don't. Is that isosceles? Don't, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna go, yes. I was gonna say, don't they all have to be the same if two of them are, but no. No. Wait. Isosceles triangle. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. That I, was just yeah. If you think we're wrong, send in a correction. We're not. <laughs> Look, if, if you think we're wrong, let me tell you, we're not. Listen, we are scientists, and we're ready to talk about it. I did say that with a lot of confidence, but I'm not confident in that answer. I'll say that. Isosceles. <laughs> What's your favorite carnival food? Corn dogs. I have no idea. You don't know? I mean, we're going to the Washington State Fair in a, in five seconds. What? I don't. We're know. going, boys. We're Pack there. Pack your bags. Green screen. I barely go to like the fair. Put us in a fair here. for this, please. I barely go to the fair. It won't be a here, video, so I'm not. It'll sure be an what image at like. Sorry, you don't go to fairs a lot, so you don't. No, really go know. ahead. You guys are having a conversation, please. I, I'd like you to finish it. We did. Okay. And now it's time for okay, you. Good. I don't know what fair food is like, so. It's fair. Okay. Damn, shooting from the hip out here. Look, I don't <laughs> think uh, fair food. Look more. I think fair food is like it's it's not like a modern thing. Is that okay? Is that? Well, I mean, it's not. It's like a low class thing. Well, it's like even like okay. When I think of fair food, the first thing that pops into my head for us. The Washington State Fair is like those mm-hmm. scones. The yeah. ones like the scones are so those good. Are, they're pretty good. They're great. Like the jam is. I pretty, have one every like, time. They're great. Uh, they had them at uh like the Bellevue Arts Festival or whatever. Mm-hmm. They had like that. I think it's called Fishers. Yeah. They're really good. They're they're quite good. Uh, but that's it's not, not even like, really a scone. That's it's not a like biscuit. Yeah, but that's not jelly. fair food though. That's just food that is like specifically sold at that particular fair. I think when someone says fair food, they mean like really shitty, greasy like corn dogs and like really bad yeah. like waffle like like waffle fucking like cone things and like I don't know waffle fucking I don't, waffle I don't know what they are like like A waffle cone like I an have, elephant um, ear or something yeah like elephant that. ear like, funnel cake I would have yeah funnel um, cake a deep fr- one of my favorite things a deep fried Snickers dude mm. look Woo! do you remember when we went to Oregon and had Baby this, uh, my. deep deep fried <laughs> <laughs> you an auctioneer what? is uh, that what they sound like yeah it's a 3, three 45, 45 45 76 <laughs> on the back end blah, 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 like talking super fast or whatever hey but what's up you have an name under five no but do you remember when we ate those deep fried Twinkies uh n- when uh when we went to Oregon oh yeah yeah too much, dude. Those weren't that great. They were too much. The Snickers, though? <laughs> Never had it. it I'm going to tell you right now, it sounds disgusting. I mean, it's... Okay. You, you'll have to see for yourself. It's, Can we it's go great. to the fair? I'd love to. I'd love, I'd love, to. <laughs> I'd love to. That's such a genuine answer. <laughs> <laughs> the fair is actually great. You have to go on a weekday, though, because... Because uh, the weekend is just too much. The weekend is a nightmare. Yeah. And also, uh, you can get the unlimited rides pass, which is the only way you should be doing rides. Because look, the only way each that ride be, costs seven dollars. That's each. insane. That's uh, that's not an exact. Look, figure, you're risking your life. Acceptable. You're risking your life every time you go on one of those rides. That's also true. You're gonna see a bolt like fly out on the side of one of those rides. You're gonna be like, "Well, yeah. <laughs> the next person who goes on this is flying." I just add to the excitement. <laughs> it's it's a thrill. It's an adrenaline rush. Did you like go to the fair like as a youngin? Yeah, or, like... I went there a couple times, but. Do you have some? Are you scared? Are you afraid of the fair? No. Are you afraid? I just don't think they were that fun. Like I don't like again. Don't like being around that many people, and I don't like the rides that much. They're not that exciting. The rides are pretty shitty. <clears throat> the food is the main no. reason to go. It's not even that great. The food is good. Also, uh, there's it, like performances. It's good for people <clears throat> watching. I guess. Like I mean, there's all kinds of people that will show up at a fucking county fair. It's true. Yeah. I uh, went to Weird Al at Yankovic performance that's the perfect okay. person to see at a fair it was incredible it was one of the best shows i've ever seen Yeah, that sounds pretty wild actually he did like a million costume he did like a different costume for every song and like had like a, a dance number for like every fucking song it was Man, great he's an artiste <laughs> like, i'm sure it was great that's <laughs> no, like i'm just I said, telling you about my like, great experience like i said at the fair 
is the perfect that is like the ideal place to see someone like Weird Al mm -hmm. or like I don't even know who Juggalos. else would be in that yeah like I would Juggalos. see the insane clown posse if they were at a fair I would be a little worried that there would be a riot Juggalos are Look, friendly it adds, people it adds to the fun they just want to they just want to be just trashed on drugs and just like listen to music they, they're not going to do anything yeah. they're fine they want to drink their Fago. Fago. Oh yeah, I forgot Classic that was juggalo a whole drink. Juggalo thing. I don't like that. I heard Fago. that they, they would like do root like beer, right? Don't they like Fago root beer? Sure, they like Fago. Fago. I heard that they would do like Fago shower where they like literally Just pour spray, it on yeah. someone. That's insane. <laughs> so gross. Just, um, I would say please Fago away from me. Nice, nice. man. That would offend. You're them. shooting. I did. I shot from the yeah, head you're right shooting. there. You're shooting. <laughs> you're you keep, shooting. You keep that MF thing on you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's my favorite new meme. Which <laughs> it's good, weird it's that a good meme that that's a meme that's correlating with like horrible tragedies, uh, like at the same time. That's kind of weird. That is. Anyways, uh, let's go more into that. Did no. you guys see that Facebook <laughs> um, post that I made where, or he probably didn't. It's no. a picture of Neo like stopping all the bullets in front of him, and it says when all the thoughts and prayers kick in. That's mm -hmm. cool. And yeah. I, I, it was too much. <laughs> it's too for much. some. <laughs> it was too much for some, but I thought it was real funny. Uh, I was also going to say that I also saw Coheed and Cambria at the fair, and I wasn't a huge fan of that show. Uh, do you like them outside of the show? I know, yeah. like, one of their songs, whatever the, what's it called? Welcome Co Home? Yeah, probably. Dun, 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 and also, didn't dun, they do dun, a dun, cover dun, of, dun, dun, yeah, dun, 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 yeah, yeah, didn't they do a cover of a song that was really unconventional? Maybe. It was, uh, fuck. Oh, they did Chocolate Rain. Oh, yeah, that was sick. Yeah, that was a lit-ass cover, dude. <laughs> yeah, I would put it in the vid, but I don't think I can probably, do that without can. copyright. Um, I have the rights. Yeah, I don't really know much about training Cambria, but I certainly wouldn't be that excited to see them at a fair. Yeah, they're a pretty good, like, progressive metal band, but um, they have some hits, and they played just about zero of them. I don't even know if they played Welcome Home, which That's unfortunate. would be just absurd. If you're at the fair, you're playing the lowest common denominator. You should be playing all your hits. Yeah, that's true. So, Great hair, though. <laughs> I, I would, I would hope so. He was firing from the hip. On some he was of shooting from the, the hip. cylinders. Some Sorry, really, but, um, Do we have more questions? Well, there are more questions, but we can be done. Who won? Okay. I mean, the fair. We could talk more about <clears throat> the fair if we want. I mean, best fair ride. I don't know. I. A ring of fire. I don't right? know. I no the idea. ring of fire. All those that go, like, upside down, like, a million times is, like, no. I Look, don't like honest, I don't like the pirate ship uh, or, pirate like, the, the the timber axe or whatever, any of those where, where it, like, steadily, uh, swing like, one? swings back and forth until, like, stops at the top and then swings back down and you, like, go upside down and everything. I hate those. Well, that's mm. the ring of fire. Yeah, I know. It's horrific. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't like those because I just don't feel safe on them. Uh, the, I think the best ones are, like, the, uh, simple, like, classics, like, the Tilt-A-Whirl, and, um... Those are always fun. Yeah, the, those are fine. The huge swing that goes super high up, and then you, like, like, fly, like, oh, yeah. outwards no. just on crappy-ass swings, and you feel kind of like you're gonna die. <laughs> I like, like those. off at any moment. Look, I'm of the unpopular opinion that I really don't like amusement parks. That's true. Like, I don't like rides, I don't, it's, I just don't like it. It stresses me out too much. Not yeah. my thing. There's some good rides, though. I would go to Disneyland and go on a lot of those rides, probably just because of the sheer novelty, and it's just entertaining. Well, those uh, those are as safe as you can get. They are, and also just like Mostly they're for they're enter, they're enter <laughs> well, yeah, but like they're entertaining. Like there's like cool themes and stuff to it. But mm -hmm. at the at the fair, it's just like get on this death <laughs> trap and just enjoy feeling Survive. like you're gonna it's die. It's literally called death trap. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's literally it's literally like they just like traveled around fucking like the Pacific Northwest or whatever, or, like, whatever area you're in, they just, like, carted it around and pulled it off a trailer and assembled like it. Like, they're still holding they did. the hammer Yeah, they, they did. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and the, the guy, like, just finished it, pounding in, like, the last nail, and then you mm -hmm. get on there, and he's like, all right, you're up. And, and they, then it's, like, you look at it, and, like, a little wind blows by, and it, like, it's like, like <laughs> shakes, and it's, like, you hear, like, the metal, like, And then you see him pick up a bag, and there's a bunch of screws and bolts in there, and you're like, well, I don't know where these are And he's, like, looking, he's, like, know. looking at a blueprint, and he's like, I don't know. I, it it's close off, enough. Guys. It it's looks done. like it looks like it's done. Yeah, I don't know. There was none of that. Like, especially at a fair, the rides couldn't be less enticing to me because it just looks 
fair enough. Nice. Woo! You shot from the hip with that. Um, one. I'm still waiting on Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, the little midway games. How do you feel about those? I don't know what that is. What do you Just mean? Just like the ring toss and like the oh, oh, shooting suck. water Count into me that out. little Count me shite. Out all those. They're kind where of you fun, get a big though, old uh, stuffy. Look, those. This is the other thing. At those fairs, the presents or like the little like the rewards present. or whatever, <laughs> whatever the, the gifts are for like getting the Give fucking, me that present. like for shooting like the like faces with the water Wait gun up. or whatever it is or like the air gun mm-hmm. like that stuff is always such low quality. Like I love it when you go to like an event and then they have a raffle and it's like these are the presents we have for you guys. The, <laughs> <laughs> I guess saying presents does sound really stupid. <laughs> The, the 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 gifts the rewards whatever I don't prizes. Know. The prizes the prizes sure God, that's literally the word <laughs> whatever <laughs> look I don't let the government control me all right no. the government runs all fails um the government probably has yeah. some hand in the Washington State Fair I'm sure they do it has the word Washington in it that's right and the word and state, state. Um, connected dots. and government look it they had to take it out because they realized that people knew their secrets Washington State Fair was an inside job. Um, <laughs> You're probably not wrong. Also, or I was just going to say that I don't like any of those midway rides, but uh, there's one where... Is that you what they're called? Midway games. Uh, games. What yeah. does that mean? Midway is the part with all those games. That's just what they call that Oh, area. that you just walk through to go to... Yeah. Anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pass-through uh, game area. Yeah. It's, it's, fly-over it's literally game. like, give me a money. Come over here and give me a money. Yeah. I don't... That's what they sound like. An auctioneer. Yeah. Look, are we, would we see carnies? Be, we go, be, be, be. Would we see carnies if we go to the fair? Would we see people that just follow, like they wear the carny outfit and like the striped? No. Um, not that crazy, probably. Okay. It's usually just like I'm disappointed. Teenagers that uh, will take any job. <laughs> that sounds about right. Um, Sorry. Continue. Oh, there is one where at the Washington State Fair where. You literally throw a. There's a wall of posters, and you throw a dart and hit the poster that you want, um, and that's like pretty almost as simple as one, two, three. You just yeah. throw it and. Are they big posters? Hit your poster. Yeah, they're pretty big, but the only thing is that. Um, you get a damaged poster. No, no, no. no. They have like one underneath. It's not like the one that's on the wall. Oh, okay. That's riddled with holes. That makes um, sense. That would be a lot of. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't put that on my wall. Um, <laughs> it would look good. Yeah. Uh, the one that I was going for, it was like a Guardians of the Galaxy poster or something like that. And then all the posters around it were like the worst things known to man. It was like <laughs> Minions, like Barbie movie, no. Emoji movie, like... All winners. Like Justin Bieber. It was just a nightmare sitch. So I was like, if that, Dude, if I miss please. this, they'll hang me. <laughs> Did you get it? Yes. I'm bad at throwing darts. I probably would have missed. That's I, I like that game too because... It's such a high chance that if you do miss, it's a hilarious situation. Yeah. Where you just get a poster and you're like, what the fuck? Have I done? <laughs> yeah, you get a Minions poster. Damn. You get a Minions poster and you have a funny story to tell. That's right. And you also have a Minions poster. It's a win-win. Yeah. Also, yes, and. Last thing about the fair. They also have deep fried butter. It sounds real good, huh? No. Deep fried never had it. I won't. No. That literally is the most American thing. That That is offensive offensively uh Good. fat <sighs> i mean butter is a key ingredient to any like great but recipe like, by itself sure if it's deep fried i don't know what it tastes like oh man i'm sure it's i'm awful. sure it's great your deep fried butter correspondent yeah the deep fried butter is pretty good <laughs> yeah that's why was that obama eating <laughs> deep fried <Obama>. butter <laughs> So big no, fan. He's a big the, fan. No, deep fried butter. Deep fried butter. It's quite good. Uh, no. Uh, it's damn good. Uh, Malia, she's a fan <laughs> of the deep fried butter. <laughs> nice. Uh, I forgot his wife's name already. Uh, Michelle. That's not Michelle. Uh, not as big of a fan. Uh, Michelle, <laughs> she she didn't like it. She likes the funnel cakes. <laughs> she's more of a funnel cake gal. She, she's more of a funnel cake gal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. I miss Obama. All right. Is that enough about the fair? Sure yes. is. <laughs> Colton P. Potter. Oh, yeah. It's Colton me again. Potter. I'm up. Now, look. You're not the only one going to ECCCCCC this year. Jordan is you going see. as well. Jordan hasn't Community gone College. yet. Jordan, be quiet while Jordan okay. doesn't talk wow. and Coulter tells us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you sailed the You're chain. losing it. 
Uh, Coulter, you went to the fair today. <laughs> 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 you went to the con today. That's Tell us right. about it. Guys, Emerald City Comic Con is a con that I've frequented in the past. Uh, we've all been there. You would say Has Jordan was, been I've there never before? Been there. Jordan's never been there. You've never been there? He's no. going a couple days from now. Guys, Jordan's never been there. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun time. It's, um, it was originally about comics, obviously. Uh, I was there back when I was at a different venue. Uh, a much smaller venue. A much smaller venue, a lot more comics, a lot less, uh, Anything. mainstream, you know, attention and whatnot. Uh, didn't sell out, obviously. Uh, now it's starting to sell out. It's starting to become as big as PAX. I noticed this year, uh, I was feeling about as much crowding as PAX almost, where you have to literally, like, Push plan, your plan your every move. I uh, hate that. Yeah, it's it's, it's not the best, but I'm I'm getting good at it at, by this point. This is the first day. Uh, Thursday was the first day. Oh, yeah, um, okay. but I forgot they're not doing. They don't do it like a pack. Yeah, where it has a Monday. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I went this year. Uh, for Friday, I'm gonna go on Sunday also. But, um, yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Uh, a lot of the same stuff. Um, I like the uh pop figures selection um i'm a big collector of the pop figures if you guys remember from season one set uh and yeah uh, i like fugitive toys they have like everything known to man as far as pop figures go and they don't overcharge to an extreme degree do they have a lot of rare ones they have a lot of rare ones and uh they have reasonably they're reasonably priced they're not like underpriced but they're like they're not overpriced like the market price they're about at that level okay so that's what i like it's respectable yeah uh i saw the abominable snowman and the uh uh the jolly roger glow in the dark as as well as the regular how much glow in the dark how how much was the regular the regular was 60 i think i probably would have bought that really yeah I don't know why I want that one so much. <laughs> I don't know either. I don't really have any connection to Pirates of the Caribbean, but That's that right. looks like a cool pop. Yeah, it's a good pop. And then uh, the Abominable Snowman was 75, just that's the regular a little, that's one. That's a little rough. And I was like, I really want the Abominable Snowman. That's, a, t- that's, that's a, a tough sell. sell. $75? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do they have John Wick Chase? Yes. How and much was he? I think it's like 30 35 mm. Oh, wait. That's about how much it is on Amazon, It's, I think. it's between 30 and 40 I'm not sure. Can't okay. remember. But, um... Yeah, a uh, lot of really cool art this year. So uh, let me show you what I, a couple of things that I bought this year. Just a little show and tell for you. Jordan, you can't, could you be a little more careful with my stuff? I tried. Um, <laughs> I tried. <laughs> that's, that's why I said it, because you're being so careful. <laughs> All right, uh, guys, this is an artist that's new this year. Uh, can't remember his name. I would I would say it if I knew. Samurai Jack. Um, it looks like CD. It's CD, yeah, those are his initials. Um, Chris so, Delavine. A lot of ECCC for me is just about what? Uh, Chris Delavine. A lot of ECCC is C. about uh, what, C. for me, is about Kermit. Is about uh, Hold on to it, bud. what Kermit? Samurai Jack uh, stuff I can get. Luckily, this year there was a lot of Samurai Jack. It's your Jack. favorite piece of media. Uh, I don't know if I'd say that, but it's my <laughs> it's uh, my favorite to buy like at conventions because yeah. there's not a lot of stuff. And it, if they do make stuff, it's usually cool like this. So yeah, I really liked this because it was um, I don't know if you can even see it. It uh, it's. it's super aggressive and like metal almost i was about to say it's very aggressive and uh almost disturbing yeah and um it's uh it looks like he scrawled it on a wall i was telling jordan i was about to say it's very uh primal yeah um it looks like a primal or a uh looks like a cave painting yeah okay yeah i was about to say that um from from (laughs) olden days it's very crude but uh well well done not crude it's like because the the silhouette of Jack is so like high quality, that it's hard to say that it's crude. This is the thing about Samurai Jack. I think the show itself experiments so much with its art style and like mm-hmm. its actual tone and theme that um, seemingly any artist could like take a piece. Like you could have this exact silhouette and like thing of Aku and everything uh, done by like six or how many different artists, it would look completely different, but it would still feel like a stamp. Like you would instantly know there's Samurai Jack Mm -hmm. because the show itself doesn't, uh, adhere to one. Yeah. To one set style style is already, uh, it's very improvisational. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm not gonna take that one out of the bag. Uh, guys, hopefully you recognize this? this character. Hey, Mugman. Good old King Dice. Oh, King Dice. Cool. Okay. Chase. Um, his yellow suit as opposed to his purple suit. Um, I looked up today and this uh, is going for about 43 or something like that market price, so 35 is not bad. And it has a protector on it. Yep. Uh, that's cool. a good thing about Fugitive Toys is they put a protector on every single one. That's Bless them. That's another reason why they're um, the best. I think Fugitive Toys is actually why I ordered my... Um, I think it was where I ordered my Ochako uh, SDCC. I think uh, it was. Uh, my Hero Academia pop, uh, which is... I don't know how sought after that is, but uh, at the time it was pretty popular mm -hmm. uh, and they sent in a nice little protector yeah so if it comes in a protector like no matter how like bad it is i always think i'm getting something nice was it feels so solid when you was cuphead and his best pal mugman in there yeah they had all of them uh, those are common these are, jordan these are really new they look <clears throat> cool though yeah there's also a cuphead chase i did not buy that one i thought this was the coolest chase i like king dice it's cool there was like a million pops i could have bought and this was like the one singular pop uh, that I bought. Uh, I also bought another pop-related thing. I did see it's not the a bag singular of this one. Pop. Uh, this is heavy. This one, I am glad that you perched. This one's got some weight. This one. Is I seem to remember you going back coming. and forth on uh, when whether or not to buy this <clears throat> multiple ECCs. ECCCCCC. <laughs> Scoop in the gang. So this is the crystal ship Hell from uh, yeah. Breaking Bad, aka the RV. Um, okay, the mystery van. The mystery van. Why is it that? Because Where are you getting that from, bud? Scooby Doo. They drive a van. A mystery machine. Sure. <laughs> this mystery is. Inc. It's a van. Um, yeah. So uh, okay. So yeah, the Breaking Bad pops are vaulted at this point. I don't mm -hmm. think they're making any more of them. So and I've decided to try and catch them all, so to speak. So yeah, this has been one that I've wanted for a long time. I don't have the crystal ship, but uh, I think we were talking about this before. I'm close to completing the set. I have uh, Walt in his undies with the gun uh, in the hazmat suit. I have him as Heisenberg. I have Jesse street clothes, Jesse hazmat suit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think I have Saul. I need, if they have a mic, I'm sure they have a Gus. I need those. Oh, okay. So I have, have Jimmy? I have these here. This one. <laughs> oh, I need Hank, and then I need the Gus, and then I have all of them, and Mike. I have uh, Crystal Heisenberg SDCC exclusive. Look, I want that one too. But technically, well, I guess this it's is not like part the, of the yeah common set. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I a lot of these since they're vaulted are actually worth a lot. Like the yeah. not a lot, but I don't know about a lot, but but the Heisenberg and like these here, the ones the ones that I have, I know for sure, and I think probably like the Hank and the Mike, um, are pretty high value for a common pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're I, like over twenty dollars, I think. Mm -hmm. I uh, I want Mike. Yeah, that'd be a cool one to have. Mike is a great character, and Jordan's gonna love him. Uh -huh. I'm gonna love him to death. <laughs> jo well, Jordan already knows all of the. Well, yeah. That's I know right. any reference related to you Mike. Know, yeah. I'm Mike adjacent. Walter. Yeah, that's my favorite one. That's a good Mike line, I right? love when Mike says that to Walter. To Walter. <laughs> 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 to Walter White. Uh, those are some good purchases. Thank you, sir. Uh, oh, there was something else. Um, Do you plan on making more purchases? Uh, okay, so, yeah, something else that they had, what... Give me a second here. Something else they had was um, a loot box, uh, <laughs> a Overwatch loot box cookie jar, ah, which was kind of lit. Tonight. I don't have use for a cookie jar, but it's like just a regular loot box. So I, I, if they, if I made, if they made a better loot box that was higher quality, that wasn't uh, ceramic, I would buy that instead. You got there. <laughs> If I made, <laughs> if I did, yeah. If I made one myself, guys, I also got this sick ass uh, Soldier seventy six gun oh, pin. Cool. That is pretty cool. Um, and it's by Pin Watch, which that logo is absolutely not theirs, and they shouldn't be using it. 
That is um, a nice quality uh, gun. Yeah. Is he that, said, go ahead. It, what, like, material is that gun made of? Is it, like, can, is it metal? Does it make a nice little cling when you... Does it, click, is it a real gun? It? Can you shoot Can you shoot the gun? <laughs> is, uh, it a real is it a hard gun? plastic? Jordan, you're going to use this to fire off those shots you didn't okay. take earlier. <laughs> Get ready Jordan, for can you please Here shoot come the jokes. Hips. <laughs> Here come the jokes, buddy. Here uh, are my delayed right. hip shots that I didn't fire off when I was supposed to. And disappointed Dane. And disappointed Dane, <laughs> the host. Um, you disappointed the host, Jordan. That's the I am the one sense. who shoots. That's my Damn. guess. That was a good... Uh, Damn. That was what... Who says that? Uh, Walter Heisman. <laughs> Heisman Walter Heisman. Heismanberg. <laughs> Hemlinberg said that. That was Heim- Heimrich Hemlinberg. In- <laughs> Hindenburg. <laughs> Heimrich <laughs> Hindenburg. Uh, yeah, and it also says Night Series. Um, I think there was maybe another series before this. And then I think he said he wanted to do a gold series. Oh. So that's Wait, is this a uh, singular man? Uh, well, one guy, I guess, was the you know driving force behind like it. I don't know. The... He was the man in the, the box. I don't know what uh, he exactly did. He may have designed them. He may have manufactured them. He may have made everyone by hand. He didn't. He may have stolen them. We don't know. We, we don't know. <laughs> he may have Look, stolen everything, know. including that logo. Bossdrop.com. Go ahead and hit up bossdrop.com for absolutely no reason. We have no idea what's on that website. It could be cool. <laughs> we talked about. Oh. I won't swear that it is. Look, Kermit, hold it. Oh, oh my god. god. It's Kermit. Fucking hold it. He does not have a Kermit. license. Oh my god. He doesn't have a license for that gun. Look, you don't need one in the US, apparently. I guess um, if, if it was a handgun, he. Hand cannon. He would have not been old enough. There's a lot of political talk here. Did there you is. see uh, any cool cosplayers while you were there? Hmm. Any that caught your eye? Um. Did any give you a boner? <laughs> <laughs> Did any give me half chubberine? Did you get a half chubberine at any of the cosplay that you saw? Uh, no. You didn't see any hot tracer bootay? No. Uh, you didn't see any hot like window I... maker bootay? No much less even that wow. uh, i saw a kid walking around with like some huge thing on his back that looked like a yes a kid uh i don't know what the costume was but then he had it didn't really seem like a costume just a huge like thing on his backpack that kind of looked like a cosplay like a gun? no and then he had two tracer guns just walking around holding him hmm. like me with that's my lazy keyblade that's lazy i don't even know if they're peace bonded just a little con humor Disgusting. for you Disgusting. <laughs> only cosplayers um, will get that joke. Only cosplayers will get this. Only cosplayers will be shooting from the hip at that one. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I didn't see any insane cosplay. Someone posted a picture of, or a video of Ghost Rider. So that was kind of cool. cool. Hmm. Um, yeah, someone was snuffle Maybe up was Nick Cage. One can hope. It was Nick Cage Skeleton Man. Nick Skellington. <laughs> Nick Skellington. <laughs> that's him. That's him in his career at this point. <laughs> Got him. Um, yeah. Interesting. Uh, <clears throat> I also went to the Funko Funcast panel where they did a live Funko Funcast, which is their podcast. How was that? Shout out to them. Um, it was. It was good. Uh, they gave away. Uh, they announced like a new exclusive that was the social media freddy funko which is like gonna be basically their pop to give away like whenever they like have events or whatever and so the first two of those were given away today so right now there's only two of that pop in the world but those are some pricey pops i'm sure (laughs) yeah trouble i'm sure there's you didn't you didn't do it like me except i didn't nail it that time um you'll get another chance if they were to sell those pops, they would be worth an immense amount of money at this point. Yeah. Pretty penny. <laughs> Up deep knee. Up deep knee. We've thought the same thing. We're having a stroke. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, and then they gave away other prizes and stuff like that. They knew that uh, a lot of people went just probably because they thought there might be prizes. Although Get there were a lot of, uh, you know, people presents. that cared a That's lot. great. So, uh, wow. <laughs> What? <laughs> there are a lot of presents there. Um, oh yeah, a lot of presents. You got a lot of presents. Uh, how would you rate your day on a scale of one to seventeen? One to worth my money. One to seventeen. Well, how long did you stay there? Did you stay until it closed down? Uh, yes. Yeah, around that time. Yeah. What but, What all like did you do? Just go to panels or like just walk around? So and stuff, I or? woke up a little late. Um, as left you my house as I do. I left my house at eleven. Uh, the con opened at ten. 
Um, and then I, so you already had I got to Seattle in my car <laughs> at 1130. And then I spent literally an hour looking for parking because it was so stop and go. It was yeah. a fucking nightmare. It's I need to remember that uh, if we go to a con on a weekend, or weekday, excuse me, not weekend. Weekends are fine, actually. Yeah. But weekday, I absolutely have to, like, try to circumvent the main, like, nightmare. Yeah. Because it's pretty clear, like, out near, like, the Triple Door and, like, Ben Arroyo and, like, farther away from the convention yeah. center. So. But traffic, to be fair, traffic around the convention center is always trash, no matter when you go. It's true, but it's but definitely it's especially terrible. really bad, yeah. like, right then. Yeah. During the worst possible time. It's possible if I went earlier, it might not have been as bad. But anyways, found a spot, paid. Didn't pay <laughs> at first. I paid at the end of the day. Excuse me, <laughs> all right? Look, we need the correct order of events. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, I also had to wait in a will call line not very long, actually. But to get your... Could have been a nightmare. Badges? Yeah, I had oh. to get my badges and will call. And by that time, I was ready for lunch. I need to eat something. And so you went and got lunch. Look, so I went and so got lunch. Eat, wow. Uh, yeah, that's that's the nightmare set. Look, would you say that you wasted your day? No, absolutely not. Because I then proceeded after I ate lunch to look at pretty much everything. Okay. See, like, just get a visual on everything. Sure. Scout it out. That's right. And, uh, I mean, there's not a lot more to do other than scout it out, to be honest. I'm not going to, yeah. like, sit at every booth looking for the intricacies and Easter eggs hidden within. Not well, waiting in line to play a game or anything. So yeah. I mean, just That's fair. Getting it out. Yeah, I mean, for me at ECC, uh, it's Community just college. about, uh, <laughs> it's just about it's scouting out day. what you want to buy and buying it. It's yeah. Shopping. You day. don't wait. You scout out everything first. You figure out what you want to buy. You make a list. You buy it all. You go home. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get a chubberine at a couple of cosplay. That's couple right, you get a little chubberine. That's so... It, look, it's horrible. It's crude. <laughs> <laughs> look, we it's don't crude. actually do this, okay? This, no, this, this seems is, creepy AF. Look, we're just th- putting we're, it we're on. We're doing this ironically, all right? That's we don't disclaimer. actually... Need a disclaimer right yeah. now. Yeah. Look, the joke is that some people actually think that way. Yeah, that, there we go. We don't think that way. That's right. Yeah. So, uh... It's, it's absurdist humor. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I looked at everything, saw... Uh, the stuff I wanted to buy. Um, I actually took a little rest because I was feeling pretty tired uh, from all that walking. You're killing me right now. You're killing me. What? You're telling me you got there an hour and a half late. Four hours. You got there an hour and a half late. You got lunch when you got there. It's probably four o'clock at this point by now. It's not. It's uh. Look, I'm willing to bet by the. Correct me if I'm wrong. By the time (laughs) that you by you by that you ate lunch. (laughs) And we're actually, like, ready to walk into the con and, like, do things. It was probably close to 3 p.m. Like, ready to like two, walk around? Like, by the time you it were finishing... It was probably 2 something. It was, like, 2.30, I'm guessing. Maybe 3. Yeah, I don't it know. It could have been 5 p.m. <laughs> Bottom line is, I saw <laughs> everything in the convention time. hall. Yeah. Sure. And then I had time to even rest. So. And time to buy stuff, clearly, I mean. Look, yeah. you had time to, to rest your weary head. And you didn't cry no more. Carry on, Coulter. So Colton P. after that, ECCCC correspondent. That's right. I um, <laughs> after I rested, I waited in line for the Funko panel. Turns out I didn't need to wait at all because there was still open space uh, uh, at the time of the panel. It's better to be safe than sorry. Which I've realized that I definitely like going to panels or not panels, going to cons by myself. Uh, there's a lot of good things about that, but the worst things are waiting in line by yourself and the downtime and resting by yourself. That's when you want the people around. But when you're walking around, I honestly like being by myself better because you know exactly what you want to do, where you want to go. You don't have to worry about losing your friends, meeting back up with them. You don't have to worry about, okay, are people getting tired? Do we need to You can just wander. Yeah. You don't feel bad for like, oh, I want to go check this thing out, but maybe these other people don't want to do it. Like, you just get your stuff done and be happy about it. Yeah, and I don't have to, like, yell to my friend that's, like, right next to me. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, it was it was good. And then, uh, so, yeah, I went to the panel, and then after that, I bought my things that I wanted to buy because I didn't want to uh, lug around stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. All in all, a good day at the con. Uh, keep in mind the thing about walking with other people when I'm there with you on Sunday, because uh, it's going to be important that you're not near me, uh, so I can just get in, get out uh, by myself. <laughs> I'm going to make a path and just shove people out of the way for you to get your stuff. Beeline to Anime Town. All right. Wherever that is. They do have an anime corner. 
Oh, I know. Yeah. All right. Swag monies. Fun times. Jordan, what are, your, what are your goals on Sunday? You said something about anime? Uh, I'm, I'm mostly going there for the uh, anime stuff. Porn. Paraphernalia, if okay. you will. Uh, check it out. Like and, what? Uh, I'm hoping for some clothing, maybe. Maybe okay. some Gundam merch. Uh, possibly, hopefully, they might have some Gundam models there. If not, that's okay. Are you going to buy a figure? Uh, mm, they're models. But are you going to... Uh, yes, I know, but are you going to buy a figure? I prime. It depends on the quality of the figure. Look if, see, a statue. look if you see Those a statue. If you yes. see a Chie statue, no. uh, I will I won't I buy know. it for you. I'll give you like a You'll do what? I don't know. You'll do what, mother <laughs> What are you gonna do, mother? What are you gonna do? <laughs> look, I, I'm always down for a Chie statue. If I happen to see one, I'll let you know. They probably I mean I probably already they own might. all the ones that exist. I'm sure they have something. But yeah. She's the bay. I saw, some, <clears throat> I saw some really cool art uh, related to anime subjects and whatnot, yeah. so, so I'm like, I'll have to show some, you that, too. Some nice posters or something, you know, just some cool stuff. The That's art always really surprises cool me. The art is very high quality. They can be very high quality. Actually, mm-hmm. I would say most of the time it's pretty good. Another thing I was going to bring up is that there's times where you go to a person that is there every year that you like, and you're like, oh, okay, they actually have some new stuff. I'm thinking about buying some of these. And then you go to other people that you liked, and it's like, oh, this is all the same shite from last year. Mm-hmm. Like, what did they even do? Yeah. And so, yeah, it's kind of an interesting situation. And then there'll be ones that's like, wow, these are so cool. Like, that's this art style is so awesome, but it's about things that I don't care about, and they have, like, yeah. two of them. Yeah. So it's like, just make... It's a mixed bag. Make stuff for, like, properties that you know will be popular. Like, you don't have to just make But then two they things. don't have the passion for it. And maybe it won't be quite as good. I suppose. Fair you don't enough. Know. Listen, I'm not going to tell them what to do, but I'm just going to say what you I won't. would prefer. And if you do, you'll answer to me. I will strongly suggest I'll it. answer to you. <laughs> and you'll... What are you going to do, chump? <laughs> You're going to slap me I'm at? I'm going to shoot you from my hip. <laughs> shooting from the hip at you. We got a running theme. We do. Um, okay. Have we said what we want to say? I've said, so. I've said my piece. Good, because I've had enough. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, I'm Jordan, sorry. I'm still waiting for you to shoot from the hip. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> just just checking in. Just shoot from the hip. This is a big old hand cannon I got here. That's I'm right. This sucker you're looking that. You're looking that. Puppy Spartan lays this MF thing. Guys, right it's time. <laughs> I'm loading this sucker up. Oh I got God. the MF thing on me, and I'm ready to shoot. <laughs> got that thing, guys. Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we watch movies. <laughs> Not this time. We didn't watch. I well, watched, you watched a movie one. this week. We didn't watch a wacky film. No. It sounds like you guys didn't watch anything. I didn't watch a goddamn thing. I'm so disappointed. I'm sorry. I've had enough. Okay. Or I actually could here. comment we'll on something that isn't a movie, but I did watch. Let's hear that. Go ahead. I watched um, both of Dave Chappelle's newest stand up specials. All right, Dan, what did I'm you watch? somewhat curious about that. But not really that much. So I'll just go ahead and say it. No. <laughs> so before you so start talking, yeah. no, I am actually somewhat interested it. about that because uh, I think I've—I don't know if I've said this on the podcast, but I, uh, hey, in Chappelle. general, don't like uh, Dave Chappelle. No, I, Dave Chappelle's great. I don't like watching stand-up. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I don't find stand-up that funny mm-hmm. uh, because I don't like <laughs> watching uh, something where. I walk into it knowing that their in, one intent is for me to laugh. I'd rather watch like a mo- like a movie or like like a I don't know like a TV show or a movie or some sort of piece of entertainment where there's like a storyline and there's like a situation and like funny things happen. I don't like just a guy or a gal or whoever like sitting on the stage just saying things that are funny. Like I, I guess yeah, I, I don't, I I don't see, like it that much. I see what you're getting at, but yeah. what it sounded like is like. I don't like it how I know that they want me to laugh. No, it's just like, it's just the whole setup of it. Like, it's just, mm-hmm. it, I don't really like it that much. So I don't, it's, and it's not that I wouldn't laugh at stand-up. It's just like, I don't choose to watch it because I don't really find you it like, that entertaining. You like at least the illusion that it's all like happening naturally. Yeah, even though it's it's definitely not. Mm-hmm. It's just the way it's presented. The presentation now, is much different. how about improv comedy? Uh, I don't, in general, I don't enjoy improv comedy. But it does unfold naturally, 100% of the time. It does, but... Is that why you never yes and us? That's right. Uh, No, improv comedy is just uncomfortable to me. Unless you're doing it. Unless I'm doing it, which is is great. 
in which <laughs> but case I would it's never fucking choose hilarious. The Guys, I'm in a box. Help. Help. Whoa. 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 Victor, how did you get in the box? Now, now <laughs> it's your turn. Um, well, I went to the shop and... And you had to get inside that box. And they told me to get inside the box. That's right. Now what's in the box? What's in the box? No, so Coulter. how... Was the I box. mean, you. I think you're a fan of stand-up as far as I'm aware. Yeah. So this is a completely different... I mean, it's a completely different perspective. But did you like the Yeah, specials? so uh, I'm a big fan of Dave Chappelle's old stuff. Uh, other than... I actually like his stand-up quite a bit, but I, I'm not... I don't love his show. Or mm-hmm. his old show. Um, it's it's good, and it I, I know it like pushed the boundaries for the time and stuff like that, but uh, I prefer the stand-up. Um, I think that uh, Killing Them Softly, I think that's the right uh, name of it, but if not, it's something very similar to that. His big comeback one? Um, no, no, no. That, the, I'm talking about his old one, like oh, oh, his oh. classic yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is one of my favorite stand-up specials of all time. Um, and the new ones uh, are the... the third and fourth of his Netflix specials to come out thus far. I've heard they're very political. Uh, yeah, but uh, the first two were, like, more political and, to me, kind of tone deaf. It sounded like an old man, like, talking about stuff he didn't know about and mm. being like, oh, I don't understand any of this. Isn't that funny? Um, like, talking about trans people and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, but the newer ones, he, uh, I feel like, kind of uh, addresses that a little bit and kind of, like, got back into the uh, into my good graces. Yeah, I was about to say that. But um, it's it shouldn't even really be about that. That's just a small thing about it. But um, aside from the political whatever, I thought that they were like more funny than the first and second stand-up specials for some reason. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed them. Um, how long are they? Like, and like I think like length? an hour. Okay. Yeah. One of them is, like, an actual, not, like, stadium, but big club show, like, similar to, like, the Paramount Theater yeah. or something like that in Seattle. Um, and then the second one, or the fourth one, technically, is uh, in a very small club where the table is literally, like, right in front of him. Like, he's talking to someone just, like, literally right in front yeah. of him. Like, hey, what's up with you? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. hey, black guy over there. I'm going to relate to you. <laughs> I'm going to point you out. As he does. Dave Chappelle is great. Um, I haven't watched a lot of it. I've seen a lot. I've absorbed a lot of it through osmosis. I haven't watched like a full mm-hmm. uh, special, but everyone knows Dave Chappelle. Mm-hmm. I was also going to say I laughed alone at one or two. I was about to, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> Were you shooting from the hip? Did he have you shooting from the hip? <laughs> he was shooting from the hip and I was catching the bullets. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought that was pretty funny. And then I, I'm starting to watch the Chris Rock uh, special that's that just came out. Oof. Not a fan of Chris Rock. Chris Rock is just a little over the top. That's that's true. I was I was watching it though, and I was like, man, this guy was made to like speak to a, like, or this guy was made to do stand up comedy because his voice is just so, uh, he's unique. I'm not saying he's bad. Like, mm-hmm. I think I think he did a great job hosting. I think he was it the Oscars that he hosted. Mm-hmm. I thought he did a pretty good job of that. And like, he's a funny guy. He's smart, uh, but I, it's a little. Like, it's a little much. He's a little much. He's yeah. very, uh, like, high energy. Mm-hmm. But I also think that his, uh, his, you know, the things he does say, his commentary is, like, really... It's, like, as far as you can go without It's, it's being, very biting. Yeah, it's very biting, and it's as far as you can go without being, like, offensive. Yeah. And he, it is that's kind of I've, offensive every once in a while, but you're, like... Well, that's okay, what I mean whatever. by the fact that he, I think he's pretty intelligent, because, like, mm-hmm. he is very... Like he knows his boundaries and he toes the line so carefully. Yeah, he can but, find that line. Yeah, but I also haven't watched a whole ton of his stuff. I've just from his movies and like from especially from the Oscars, he uh, was hosting a very controversial year of the of the Oscars, and I thought he handled it well. Yeah, and it could have been a disaster. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the way he delivers it makes it so that the sometimes outlandish things that he's saying are like, okay, this is a character saying these things. Yeah, it's not, it's like not a really. Guy. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's good. I like him too. I haven't watched all of it, but also the lighting in that special. You should just look at like photos of like his lighting because he put like behind him is a ton of uh, big circular lights shining directly upward, and then above it are a bunch of lights shining directly downward behind him, um, and they like spray smoke so that it looks like there's a bunch of just circular like columns going upwards, which is really hmm. cool. Interesting. Yeah. 
Interesting. Nah. So that's my Netflix corner. <laughs> that's your stand-up corner. <laughs> Jordan, you didn't watch anything or uh, nothing do anything? Of note. Um, I I don't want to get into it because it's not. I don't haven't watched a lot of it, but I have been watching some other recent uh, anime. But I don't want to get into it. So fair. Uh, well, I watched uh, a little small. Uh, I was going to make a joke and say a little small indie film. It is kind of a little small indie film anyway, uh, called Call Me By Your Name. Uh, it is, uh, it was really big at the, around the festival circuit, uh, and is up for Best Picture. Um, Timothy Chalamet is up for Best Actor, uh, and I think it's up for, like, Best Original Song and something else at the Academy Awards. Um, and I don't know if it's a front runner for... In terms of like, however they calculate the odds, I don't know if it's a front runner for um, best picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very close, I think, uh, behind Three Billboards and Shape of Water. But I think uh, it's possible that he could win. Uh, I think he's the the top pick behind Gary Oldman, uh, which everybody thinks is a shoo-in because he's he wore a fat suit. Uh, and so everyone's like, he's gonna win for playing Churchill. Um, but after seeing this movie, I really hope that he wins... Uh, Timothy Chalamet, I hope he wins Best Actor because he did a fantastic job. Um, do you guys know anything about this movie? Absolutely nothing. Y- nothing. Not one bit of information. Uh, so it's uh, it takes place in northern Italy in the year 1984, say even. 83. Say even. I think it's eight, 1983. Um and it takes place at a uh, family's a- Italian, um, like, countryside... Uh, estate. Estate mansion. Very rich, uh, nice house. Um, and uh, it follows a boy named Elio, who is played by Timothy Chalamet. He's 17 years old. Uh, and then... In real life. He, I think he's... Well, he's quite young. I think he's, like, 20 in real life. Hmm. But in the, in the movie, he's 17. Oh, okay. He's supposed to be 17. <clears throat> um, and then... Uh, Oliver, who is played by Army Hammer, who does a great job too, Army uh, Hammer comes to stay with the family uh, while he works on like I think he's doing like some sort of like graduate study or something, and he's supposed to be twenty four, uh, and he's staying at their resort and uh, they they form a relationship. That's all I'll say, because um, it is somewhat complicated. Um, Facebook. It's not Facebook official. <laughs> yeah, Army Hammer. Have you guys seen a lot of movies with Army Hammer in it? No. I was starting. I was trying to think of any. I hadn't seen any besides Social Can Network. Can you name any? Social Network. He plays the twins. Oh, uh-huh. the Winklevosses. The Winklevosses. The Winklevi. <laughs> um. Anyway, yeah. So he does a great job, but this is really Timothy Chalamet's movie. Uh, it's it's a very. Um, you can call him Timothy. We can, we can call him Tim. Timmy. His friends call him Timmy. Um, Timothy. He uh, does a great job in this movie. He Timothy and Army. Sorry. It's kind of about him and, and Army and Jiminy. Oh, and Jeremy is here, I, too. Wait, is he? No. Um, you said that so, like... You were, like, goading me to, like, be happy. You're like, Jeremy's <laughs> here, too! <laughs> uh, <laughs> the whole family is there. The Jeremys are all there. Um, no, so basically it's a movie... Uh, it's a very interestingly filmed movie. Um, it's uh, kind of just, like... Uh, I would say it's around two hours, probably, and it's really just a collection of just, like, things happening. Like, of just, like... Uh, there's a lot of scenes of the characters doing seemingly nothing, which I think a lot of people might find a little boring. Um, but it's, like, this like, almost hypnotic, like, weird kind of, uh, like, you feel like you're watching, and I, I watched some interviews with the director, but he, he said he wanted you to feel like you're watching, like, something that you're recalling from, like, your memory. Like, it's kind of, like, not hazy, but it's, like, um, not necessarily dreamlike either, but you're kind of, like, recalling, like, fond memories or, like, a mm-hmm. fond time or something. So it's kind of in this, like, weird, like, happy, like, um, like, melancholy, like, weird, state and i don't really know how it reminds me of great gatsby the new one at least um kind that's much more like over the top than this like this is very reserved but like sort of like that where you feel like you're looking back on a good time or like of like events or something um and yeah it's kind of about like 
I think a lot of people can relate to this movie. It's not just like a, that gay movie at the Oscars. Like it's they, there's not really like, like a lot of explicit like sex or like they don't really even explicitly. Thank God, because I don't want to see any nudity or in a movie. Right. I would don't. I, violence is fine, but nudity is just nudity and swearing. No, no. And cussing. Uh, no cusses. No cusses or swear words. Oh, um, swear words. A swears. I don't want to hear a H bomb get. Dropped I don't want to hear a swear. <laughs> I don't want to hear the word hell. <laughs> okay, I had to lean in for that one. Um, no, but it's so it's about like they, not, there's not a lot of explicit anything in the movie. They don't explicitly say like these characters are gay. It's just like this relationship that they form, um, and it's about like uh, good old Timmy or Elio in the movie, um, like coming of age and like um, accepting yourself and accepting other people for who they are and like um, I don't know. It's like a very human movie, and it and it it's like the script and a, the way the movie is filmed it's shot on one um i don't know i think it's a 35 millimeter lens but basically uh the entire movie is shot on a single lens so every shot is a wide shot uh so there's like a consistent every frame has so much going on there's just it's so dense uh <laughs> so much cgi uh <laughs> no but like it's like a i don't even know how to really explain it but every shot because of the fact that it's on the same lens um, it gives you a better feeling of the fact that you're maybe watching something that happened or that that is happening rather than watching like a carefully crafted film or movie. Um, it just kind of feels like you're there, like witnessing events. Um, In my mind, I'm imagining watching like a diorama of like a set. No, no. I mean, it looks real, but it's like it, it, the perspective always looks like it could be just like a normal person like seeing what it is it doesn't look like a weird camera angle looking down from like their like different angles and different like uh heights and all this weird stuff um it's it's hard to explain without actually seeing the movie but it was very cool uh it was a very cool effect but then also um kind of just like the pacing of the movie gives you a lot of time to like actually form a relationship with these characters and it was it was very good i would say right now from from the best picture nominees that i've seen it's definitely the most unique uh, and the one that left the the biggest impression on me because it has a lot to say about uh like life like at the very end there's like a 20 the last 20 minutes um there's there's the guy who plays elio's father uh, his name, his name in real life is Michael Stuhlbarg, I think, or Stuhlbar, uh, and he gives, like, an all-time, like, amazing monologue at the end, where it's, like, one of those scenes, like, in a movie where you're, like, holy shit, that guy, like, went in on his, on his acting chops. He goes in at the end, uh, and it's a pretty moving scene. Did um, you cry? I did cry at the end of this movie. And I, I, I think almost anyone would cry, because it's a very real, like, I won't say anything about it. I won't spoil anything about it. But if you do watch this movie, uh, I think someone can connect with at least something that he says. Uh, it's a very moving scene. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's a great actor. So for that scene alone, uh, I think I'm surprised he wasn't up for any sort of award. But it was very incredible. Um, but overall, the movie was very good. I really liked it. There's a lot of things to say about it. But... Um, did it, you like this movie better than Three Billboards? Yes. I was going to say, uh, I was, the reason I was looking at my phone was because I was thinking about trying to pull up and see if you said the exact same thing about Three Billboards that it left the biggest impression on you. I feel like I remember you saying that. You did that. say that movie I, left you thinking. Uh, yeah, I mean, it left me thinking about like what the movie meant and what its themes were and like what it was trying to say and everything. But uh, after watching Calling By Your Name, uh, it is very explicitly... Like, you very you're very aware of exactly what it was trying to make you feel and think and it didn't really leave me guessing or wondering what the meaning was i just it left me a lot to think about exactly what it was like i yeah. it was very clear um and especially that final monologue was actually pretty pretty impactful so cool very good movie um i think you guys would actually probably like it it's very different than anything you'll probably ever watch it's it's a very weird, uh, weirdly shot and paced movie, but it's pretty good. It's I'm pretty intrigued. good. <laughs> it it it's a very uh, it's a very immersive movie. Like when you're watching it, even though like not a lot is necessarily happening in terms of like a like a movie, um, 
you would, you're definitely immersed and you definitely feel like you're in Italy and like all these things are happening. Like it definitely feels pretty like real. Like there's spicy meatballs in every scene. That's right. <laughs> they, just around the corner, someone is <laughs> is crafting a spicy meatball. A lot of chefs saying, that's a spicy meatball. You just hear that in every scene. That's right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of chef's hats. Yeah. Look, it's after that monologue spicy. at the end. That was a that's spicy a spice, That was a spicy meatball. <laughs> you said that, and you're like, that's a spicy meatball. <laughs> yeah, no, crying. this is definitely one of those movies, like, uh, I think we were talking before about, like, I think I cried at the end of, like, Warrior. It's a sad movie. This this movie wasn't sad as in, like, no one dies or anything. Like, it's not like, it's spoiler. not like, yeah, I guess that's kind of a spoiler, but it's not like, uh, I didn't like you're not, like, grieving or anything. It's mm-hmm, not like, oh, my God, me. this is, like, horrible. Like, why did this happen? Yeah. But it was, like... It's so like real, like when what he says at the end mm-hmm. is specifically that scene, and then what that means for the rest of the movie, and like the way it ties everything together, uh, and then specifically actually the final shot of the movie, which a lot of people have been talking about, um, is very interesting, uh, and it definitely leaves like you you definitely finish the movie and you're like, damn, that was that was intense. So for that reason alone, uh, I'm out. It's my best picture. <laughs> it's, I'm completely out. No, it's my pick for best picture right now. I don't think it'll win at the Oscars, but it is my personal pick All right. from what I've seen. For what it was trying to be, it, I would say it was a perfect film. Wow. How so. many movies, how many of the best picture nominees are you planning on seeing at this point? Um, well, the Oscars are on Sunday. So the last one that I actually have the ability to watch would be... Or that that I have the ability to watch and want to watch would be Shape of Water. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I don't really care about Darkest Hour because I know what I'm getting myself into. I don't really care about Phantom Thread, and I certainly don't care about The Post all that much. Mm-hmm. But they, they they're I'm sure they're all fine. I like how we're kind of talking about like watching all them before the Oscars, but it really doesn't matter. It's not like they're gonna get up on stage and be like the plot of this movie is. Yeah. No, but for me, like, with the Oscars, I kind of like just being able to actually have, like, a critical Evaluate, opinion yeah. and, like, and, and when they're on stage and they're going through it and, like, having anticipation, but actually having, like, a reason to be mm-hmm. excited about what I want to win. So, yeah. It's a little more exciting. I also work that day, so kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't plan on watching the Oscars, nor have I ever, so I don't care either way. I just like watching good movies. Mm-hmm. So. I will say so far from all the movies, I mean, you've, you've seen Dunkirk. You've seen Get Out. Mm-hmm. Three billboards. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Is that out of the... Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. Um, Lady Bird is good. It's definitely worth watching. Um, I think you'd actually probably enjoy that one. Uh, this one was certainly very good. It's definitely different than something you'd watch of your own accord. Yeah. It, you might like it. Um, and then Shape of Water, I'm really excited to watch. I don't know if I'll be able to watch that before the Oscars or not. All right. So. Anything Great. else? Um... Mm. No. Oh, I watched um, <laughs> a YouTube video. I watched two things. One of them we'll probably want to talk about. The first one, I watched the first episode of Altered Carbon, uh-huh, okay. uh, which I actually kind of liked. I liked the themes and like the kind of the world that they built. Uh, I hate Netflix the, corner I hate was the, at the beginning. Of this <laughs> that's right. You missed out. I hate the main character. And for that reason, I won't oh, watch was that. Was it a serialized? For some reason, I thought it was anthology, like Black Mirror. Uh, no, it's a serialized, yeah. It's, like, ten episodes or something. Um, yeah. I, the main character is, uh, the guy who played the new RoboCop. He was in, uh... <laughs> that movie we all saw? Yeah, I know, no one saw that. Uh, is what else RoboCop is he... on the list? No. No. Is it we not? We probably should be. Have, have you guys seen that? No. What the fuck? We probably should None put that on there. None of us have seen that? Yeah, we probably should put that on there. Um, the old the RoboCop or, or the new RoboCop? Fuck, the old I don't one, know. Of His name is Joel Kinnaman, I think. Okay. Uh, Joel he, Kinnaman. I don't like... I don't like him. Jeremy He's only Hurt. seen one episode. He might get better. He's annoying as fuck. He might get better. He's like, what he is, is he's like a skinny Marcus Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds lit. But but not funny. Anya. Anya. <laughs> You're going to ruin my fucking tomatoes. There's a berserker in the vicinity. Please advise. Please advise. I love Marcus Phoenix. Marcus Phoenix is the greatest gaming character of the past 20 he's years. He's a fantastic character all around. Is he the one that's also the voice of uh, Bender? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Jake the dog. John got, DiMaggio. John He's DiMaggio. got quite the vocal range. Great guy. I think he also plays like a Transformer or something. Possibly. Oh, no, that's uh, the guy that does Eeyore. Uh, Sam Fisher. Uh, uh, yes, yeah. Michael Ironside. Yeah. Great name for a voice actor. Just a, a, great, just a great, great name. Great name in general. Um, I bet he got called Iron Mike as a, prob- young, as a oh, young man. Oh, for sure. The next thing, uh, and the second thing that I watched uh, that Coulter and I have actually already discussed, probably enough, is uh, I watched 
for some reason, uh, the mid-season premiere of The Walking Dead, uh, which, uh, which I unironically and I'm not trying to be like an ass. I actually hated. Uh, I thought it was a very bad episode, and it reminded me why I don't, I don't watch remember that show. you saying you hated it, but I didn't yes. hate it. But well, I hated. A, I hated. You said you hated it. it. No, just now. I. I <laughs> you said it. Look, I hated the majority of it. Okay. And I hated I hated the overall... So, like, would you say you mostly hated it? I mostly hated it. <laughs> okay. There were a few scenes that were fine, but, like, it didn't redeem the, the okay. episode. Why uh, and we, we've already talked about it. Why did you, like, very quickly, why did you even bother that's, watching it? I was hanging out with people who were watching yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's that That was what I was uh, fine, asking. Then. I was I, like, why did you watch, like, I would have never, like, I was yeah. okay with watching it. I wasn't, like, I didn't put up a fuss. I didn't, didn't, I, I didn't even, like, I honestly didn't care. I was like, yeah, I'd be curious to see what's happening on The Walking Dead. You didn't preface that by saying, I fucking hate this show. It's the worst show on I did say. I did say that I don't like that show. But if that. you were with me and I wanted to watch it, you would have been like, no. <laughs> no, I would have watched it like, with you. It's the I worst show on television. you just happened to be with me. You know? I definitely would have watched it with you. I would have complained about it and probably made fun <laughs> of it. And I did make fun of it as I was watching it. But, yeah, so, I don't know, man. Look. <sighs> Listen, we're about to get a wildly different take from me. It was we the talked greatest. about it already. I mean, that's yeah. why I'm saying there's not a lot, whole lot to say that we haven't said already. I mean, it just that show just, f- it just frustrates me so much. There's so many things on that show that frustrate me. That's right. And and you agreed with some of the points that I brought up. Yeah, I mean, I don't contend that it's fucking perfect or like anything like that. In yeah. fact, in a lot of ways, it's like amateurish almost. Yeah. But. I do. I am invested in the characters, and the long-term ideas of the whole thing are what I think uh, resonate most. But there's a specific character that died that we knew was going to die beforehand, and uh, Walter White. <laughs> Walter White. <laughs> Walter. And it was dumb that they killed that person in the way that they did. Can we just well, say it? I guess also in the way that they did too, because there's no significance whatsoever. But. Um, Jordan, do you care? I guess there is significance, but but also I I was just doing it for the viewers also, but we can put like a spoiler warning or whatever, but we are going to talk about the mid season premiere of the walking dead. We're going to spoil who dies right now. (laughs) Um, okay. So yeah, Carl dies. He's one of the the main characters of the show. He's been there since Since day day one. Was he in the first episode? He was in the second. That's right. Um, so yeah, uh, no, he wasn't the first one. I think. I don't remember. I think they show matter. a scene where it's like, "Where's Daddy? <laughs> is he coming home?" And then maybe. Lori is I like, guess, "No, maybe I don't. I don't even. We know don't have the budget sure. for Andrew Lincoln." And then they decided that they did, and he came back in the second one. Anyways, well, yeah. what happened in that in the second episode? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Get they, out! <laughs> all right. Um. Yeah. So yeah, he dies. Uh. The whole episode is him dying because he got bit, and so he has a lot of time to mm. say his goodbyes to everyone. Uh. I was very sad. Um. Because, or at least I felt emotional. I love how you just scoffed. You're like above this. You're Did like, you no, it's like, just because I'm so fuck. frustrated by it. I'm not. It's not anything with you. It's just that when I'm thinking about the show, it's like I just I'm so frustrated. Did Listen, you like him as a character? Uh. I enjoy him now, or I, like, I enjoyed his character at this point, like, obviously okay. before it was annoying, like, he was an annoying kid, but, um, I, en- I also enjoyed the path that he was going, and also, I haven't read the comics, but I know that he's, like, a big character in the comics and hasn't died yet, so it's, like, a big Uh-oh. divergence from the comics, yeah. uh, probably one of the biggest thus far, um, and I know that they didn't, I'm pretty sure that they didn't do it because they wanted to, like, uh, give, or, like, because of the actor for any reason, because his childhood also is kind of already over. He's like almost 18. Uh, so they're not doing it so that he can have a normal childhood or something yeah. like that. But they also aren't doing it uh, because of other actor reasons, because apparently his dad was mad because they just bought a house in Atlanta because they were like sure that that was going to be yeah. like a job for him or something yeah, like that. going to be making bank. Yeah. So now they have to like figure that out or whatever. Yeah. So he, I think his dad was like vocal on Twitter about that. I actually did read a couple like interviews or like articles about uh his family and and like his response to like being killed off of the show basically Mm -hmm. uh which was interesting but yeah so there's and there's not really much reason on the show thus far as to why they did that and they're they love to like do something and then explain it later so maybe they'll like at some point it'll be significant but in my opinion there's not really much they could do that could validate that so it's dumb but also and they, can we also say that he died, he was bit, and or like this whole thing set in motion, as far as I'm aware, was... Uh, uh, you're turning into a, a walker. A walker. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, but like uh, the whole like way that he was bit and like started this whole like descent into death for an entire episode was really stupid. Um, so it doesn't well, make any sense. It makes sense because he uh, there is this guy that they saw. Um, at this point, they're in like they're embroiled in this war and they're they're locked into their duties as like a group. Sure. And so they see this guy while uh, him and his dad are on a run. And yeah. uh, Carl goes, it starts approaching him. He's like, hmm, like, let's see what this guy's all about. He could be bad, could be good. We've seen a million examples of both on the show thus far. So we don't know what to think about this guy. So st- Carl starts going up to him. Then his dad, like, fires off a shot. You think, oh, maybe he killed him on the spot because that's what he's done before in some situations. Yeah. Um, but he didn't. He just fired, like, a warning shot, and then the guy runs away. So over the course of the season, Carl's been trying to reach out to that guy again. Um, and like trying to make a peace offering and like help him out and stuff. Cause he's going to die. Cause he doesn't have any food. Like he was just like, I, guys, I just need some food. Like, please just yeah. don't kill me. Like anything. It's is, the Indian guy. Anything right? is okay. Yeah. His name is Sadiq. Sadiq. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the whole, uh, the bite happened while they were like in the forest, just like trying to get back to camp or something like that. Um, and they were just fighting off zombies like they've done a million times. A bunch of zombies fell down on Carl, which has happened many times before in the past. So many times. And he has plot armor. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I'm not, nothing bad is going to happen here. And yeah. then he does eventually stop them. There's like, you know, a lot of like suspenseful music and stuff that plays during that scene, but it's like, sure. no one's going to die unless yeah. it's Sadiq. Like he could die, yeah, but yeah. who cares? Cause he doesn't have plot armor yeah, <laughs> or any sort of armor. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he apparently gets bit. They don't show it. Um, so, which I, I just mean like, and I get the whole thing where they were trying to show like Carl put himself in harm's way to help yeah. someone that Rick wanted. And now he pays the price, the ultimate price for it. And I get that, but that is the abs- in my opinion, that's the absolute like dumbest and easiest and just worst way that you could kill off such a major character. Like there needs to be some, like, that's when I was mentioning like uh T dog or like, um, not T Dog, but what's his name? Tyrese. Tyrese, or uh, uh, like Andrea, or any of like those, or like any Shane, like any major death. When you think about it, it's like had some major stakes in like that season or in that like moment, or something at least where they have like some sort of epic like send off. But this felt so lame for Carl. Like I mean, it, all those are mostly tied to the comics too. But this is clearly like. He was written off the show, basically. Like, there's yeah. something else at work there besides just strictly them wanting to yeah. juice up well, the Yeah, well, what season. I mean is that, like, they... Maybe that just shows, like... And I'm not trying to be a hater, but, like, maybe that just shows how bad this show is, like, in terms of, like, writing or something, that they just couldn't come up with something better than something so mundane for, like, probably, arguably, arguably the biggest character on the show next to Rick at this point. Maybe, like, Daryl and then Carl is right underneath there or something. I don't know, but... Or, like, Michonne or someone, but it just... I don't know. Something feels wrong. Like, it didn't feel right. Yeah. It didn't feel very epic or, like, even that impactful to anyone, really. Yeah. So the decision to do that was really weird, but um, I thought the execution of, like, him saying goodbye to his family and, like, uh, his dad and, like, Michonne and stuff like that was uh, sad in the moment. Just because for no other reason than you've watched this show for eight seasons, he's been there since the beginning, he's a child, he's dying. Like, Mm -hmm. you can't not be sad about that, like... I guess the thing is I wasn't sad because I was so upset at the way that they were doing it. Like, I mean, you the, also don't care about the show. Well, no, but, like, well, <laughs> I characters. I cared for some of it, like, up to a certain point, and that's why I'm, I'm upset because I want to like the show, but it just doesn't do it for me. Like, I think the reason I wasn't upset is because I was so distracted by the poor execution of the actual, like, like technical aspects of the show and, like, the writing and just... Like, I was just so disappointed by the execution of it that I couldn't get behind the emotional impact. Yeah. Uh, which is... Understandable. Upsetting. It's upsetting. Yeah, I'm not trying to be, like, a blind hater. I have issues with it. Yeah. I don't just hate it because it's popular. Um, Also about just the episode in general, uh, the Morgan storyline I actually liked quite a bit. I like a lot where they're going with Morgan, and I have no clue what's going to happen next with Morgan. Um, Long story short, uh, he was in the first episode of The Walking Dead, actually. Um, He had this arc where all of his family died. He went crazy, started killing everything that he saw, walkers, humans, anyone in front of him. He just had to clear it all, which is one of the names of the episodes. He just kept repeating clear. He's like a madman. Um, And then he meets this guy who uh, teaches him the ways of Aikido, which is like peaceful 
like martial, martial arts. arts defense. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he becomes Zen Morgan and refuses to kill anyone, the opposite of his previous self. And an event happened earlier in the season in which someone he taught that to uh, died. It was a kid. Um, and one of the saviors killed him dumbly. Uh, although it was meaningful in the show and it, it was actually really good. I liked that episode a lot. Um, and so, yeah, now he's kind of going back and forth between the, like, kill everything and, uh, like, Pacifist. like be a good person. So, yeah, that's really interesting and you never know what he's going to do. Yeah. But in this episode, he literally, like, he's leaning more towards kill everyone. He Right now he wants to kill all the saviors. So he's, like, going out of his way to make sure every one of them dies. And then one of them is on top of him and he just like, he's like, I'm not about to die. I don't, I don't die. Like earlier in the season, he says, I can't die. Like, that's my curse. I don't die or something like that, uh, which is kind of badass. Um, and then, so in this episode, the guy's on top of him. He's like, he doesn't know what to do. And he sees a wound on the guy's like stomach. So he reaches his hand into the wound. Do you see his hand like go fully into his stomach? And then he pulls out his like intestine, <laughs> like rips it out. Like just rips out uh, like a giant. And then like... you see like a blood splurt everywhere. Yeah. And I will say that was one of the most brutal kills I've seen. Maybe on, maybe ever, certainly on television. Yeah. That was uh, nuts. Yeah. And so that was lit. That was pretty crazy. But the whole like, again, like it's just... The show is so just like in that same scene there's this really lame shootout like this these people are shooting and it's just like it was kind the of most amateurish like film it just looked like a student film like they literally wish with this cut to someone with a gun and they're just like like doing like this and then they cut over to like I, I can't even explain how bad it is it looks like like Resident Evil like apocalypse style like cuts it was really bad great and filmmaking. just really really bad like sh gun effects and like reactions from people getting shot and I was like God, this is so stupid. Mm -hmm. I was checking out. And yeah. then as soon as he reaches into that guy's chest, I was like, I'm back in. <laughs> this is lit. And then after that, I, nutty. after that, it was more of like a story-based thing that I couldn't get into because I didn't know what was happening. But yeah. um, to be fair, that scene was kind of cool when he, when he reached and yeah. destroyed that guy. So I'm excited to see what happens with his character. Anyways, yeah. Walking Dead corner. Didn't expect to go that far with it. I don't know. Yeah, I just thought it was interesting to bring up because I don't... There's no reason for me to watch that at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, somewhat interesting. Anyway, that's what we've watched this week, last week. Some week. In general. Now. Yes. On to the main event. Set the stage for us. Please. Oh my god. Are you having a stroke? I don't know what's happening. Dane loves this bit where he just doesn't make sound on the podcast. I was debating whether or not I should just act like I'm going into the outro and just be like, well, guys, <laughs> that's been our episode. I think there was too much build up for yeah, that. Yeah, there was too much. Um, guys, sometimes we play <clears throat> video games. Sometimes. This week we sure did. Who wants to go first? Not me. Not Coulter. Jordan. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not me. Not you. Well, uh, what have I've, you played? I've actually played a number of things this week, uh, and from last week. Start out with the thing you like the most, and end with the thing you like the not the most. <laughs> Oof, that's gonna be a tough one. And I want you to make. I want you to shoot from the hip at least once. Okay. This. Uh, all right, guys. Are you ready for this one? Kingdom Farts. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, got him. Wow. Uh, I'm really glad that guy's uh, got you guys with that one. That was Thanks. great. Left you in you, stitches. You definitely shot from the hip Thanks. with that. Uh, office party. Uh, There's no uh, question. Icebreakers. Get your coworkers shooting from the hip. Get your coworkers. Uh, pretty uh, close. Hip, hip for some reason, they call it a game also. Uh, it's not a game. They insert the word game for no reason. <laughs> Look, uh, it's not a game. It's my life. <laughs> yeah. This isn't a not fucking the, game. Uh, Stir. Not the most fun thing I played, but the first thing that comes to mind, because I played all of it and beat it, uh, Kingdom Hearts 1.5 Final Mix. I started playing it, I think, like a couple weeks ago. Uh, and then over this last weekend, I was like, uh, I'm just going to sit down one day and play it. And then I ended up just playing through all of it and beat it. Jordan, how many hours total did you clock in? Uh, about 20. That's a fast playthrough. Like 20. Yeah. It's not It's not a long game. You can make it long if you want. It's not. Uh, and so fortunately, I got I remember being fast. somewhat longer than 20 hours. 20 hours seems that's a, very that's short. That's a speed run. You know, like almost. 23 hours? I don't know. Damn. Okay. So anyway, continue. listen. We know that Jordan completes games ridiculously. I'll fast. tell you right now. I died Doki one Doki time Literature in that game against Ursula, and every other time I didn't oh, die. Interesting. Mostly because that Ursula fight is a just trash bag of a fight. It's a it's yeah. a mechanical nightmare. <laughs> it's just. 
Okay, well, let's start from the beginning. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> it's just, it's a fantastic game. A lot of n- nostalgia for the game that I had going in. Like I said, whenever I start the game, I get that just, like, little chill. I'm like, okay, I love this. And, like, bum, I, yeah. Bum, that, bum, like, bum. when those little, like, Dude, bells it's ding. It's a wholesome mm. game. It's, it is. That's the thing that really caught me is that the game is very wholesome. I wasn't really prepared when I was playing it that there was honestly not a lot of story in the game. Like, when you go through it, it's each world is really, it's kind of own separate story, but there's not that much in there. There's not a lot of dialogue between any of the characters. Mm-hmm. All the story for like the main overarching like meta story for the game comes from like the traverse town stuff and like a few cutscenes at the end of the game and like everything else in between is like no connection whatsoever. but to be fair the cutscenes at the end of the game go in yes and i will say uh i i'm gonna jump ahead uh when i got to the end of the game i was like okay like i'm Start at the beginning it. and uh, and second I mean, point, there's the not end. there's not that much to talk about. Specifically okay, just talk about game, like like did it hold up? Did did you play? Part, did yeah. you play through it and go through all the worlds and like have an experience where you're like, I understand, I I can I understand and I can stand behind the fact that this is a classic. Uh, yes, for the most part. There like were, obviously, there's some gameplay mechanics. The camera mechanics are shit. The camera, okay, I will. Unless say right they now, fixed it, and they fi- didn't. The camera is okay. fucking atrocious well, in that. It's game. on the stick now. So well, yeah, it is, but yes, it still but has still, a mind of its own. It's still it does bad. not control well at all. They did fix that in Kingdom Hearts Two Final Mix or whatever, but mm-hmm. in the first one, not great. Uh, they fixed it in general in Kingdom Hearts Two. Like, yeah, normal yeah, it, yeah, it's fine. But yeah, when I was playing it, like it's fine. There were a couple levels, like I said, like Deep Jungle was uh, a trash. It's impossible to navigate through there. Mm-hmm. There's a couple other ones. Monstro. Mon- uh, Monstro also really bad, mostly because it's just impossible. You can't fucking tell where you are in that. It's it's because so every hard. chamber is the same. Yeah, and like yeah. there's a bunch of just like cheap doors that just drop you back to the start, and that that's that pissed me worst. off so many times. I was like, okay, I finally made it to the fucking chamber six or whatever, and then I go through a hole in the wall. It drops back at one. I was like fuck off like, yeah why did you that's do a, that that's upsetting me? uh but yeah and it, it, it's not that bad and then, a lot of that is like somewhat archaic ps2 level it design, is it's which you can't really fault them at the time I mean, you can't but it doesn't like even like if i was an adult back then playing it i would have been like okay this isn't like that's not a fun game mechanic like that's not good yeah uh, but for the most part it holds up a lot of the boss fights i didn't enjoy because either a they're cheap or b they're just like they're just completely simple and time consuming. Like Ursula. They were drawn out. They are very like Ursula was so fucking annoying because the randomly you're just being struck by lightning the entire fight. Like you can't block it. You what about the Oogie it. Boogie fight? Oogie Boogie, kinda cool. Like the arena. The roulette, is, like the roulette, the roulette, the roulette is like, neat. That's like, a cool that's, that's a neat. cool mechanic. Uh but there are other ones like Jafar was fucking annoying. Uh like the first part where he's like mm-hmm. z- zooming in the orb. Like those fights are annoying, but I did have a lot of fun just going through the story and like uh, I didn't realize or remember how much I actually liked Hollow Bastion, which is like, oh, to me, like the pinnacle of that game. I was like, oh, this is like, I, that's I know the best part. Yeah. A lot of people say about Kingdom Hearts, like the best part is the part that's aren't, that aren't Disney. And I was like, hmm, I don't know if I agree with that. And then I got to Hollow Bastion. I was like, okay, this part is like separated from Disney. Like they have their own level design it's not terribly designed it's actually a cool dungeon like it, it is it's somewhat reminiscent of beating the beast though there's well, it's technically like, a little bit it's tech or it's radiant garden turns out to be radiant garden in the second game but uh i can't remember it's obviously not disney but i thought uh, it was supposed to be beating the beast no because you go to beast's castle one. oh that's true that's true too it's its own own thing okay but it's yeah that whole sequence a lot, really good the story is like being laid out at that part a ton too that's when it gets that's when it amps up yeah but also i didn't realize when you beat that you're basically at the end of the game (coughs) like you beat hall bastion one you go back you come back to hall bastion two again and you're done with the game you go to end of the world and you're done Mm -hmm. it's like oh okay like that was fine but Mm -hmm. overall what's the final disney world uh or what what are the options and because you can do them in peter pan oh yeah it's neverland is the final one okay uh which is also i not many times and i know the strategy guide forward and back all, I haven't Neverland, played it in a long time. Also, not a fantastic level, but uh, it's fine. The the hook fight is interesting. Hook fight is also okay. like the part where you're fighting Negasora. Oh yeah, the oh uh, <coughs> Shadow Sora. <coughs> Shadow Sora. Uh, yeah, that, negative. That, that's Sora. Yeah, but yeah. So when I got to the end of the game, I was prepared for it. I didn't. I didn't remember a lot of the like details of the story because it's been a long time since it's been a hot men but i will say at the very end of the game when sora and Kyrie are hugging each other and then they split apart and simple and clean kicks in i was like oh <laughs> fuck like, like no i literally got i got the chills i was like damn that was a fucking fantastic like <laughs> cutaway right there like that was amazing and that's oh that's the end God. of the game i was like oh, that's awesome that's yeah. hilarious so that was fun it's a great game man <laughs> it's just like oh, it's just so it's just a heartbreaking moment when they're just flying away from each other and, it's just and they've been they've been trying to reconnect ever yeah, since they're just separated by time and space that's unfortunate 
but the yeah. whole game you're just trying to get to that next crisp ass cutscene with a hot ass utada hikaru song yeah. Yeah. And then they hit you with it at the end, but not in the way that you want. No. Yeah. It'll never be as good as the opening cutscene of any of those games. That's right. That's true. But then I did move on almost immediately afterwards to playing Kingdom Hearts 2, uh, which again... And you realized it, be eight, it would be eight hours until you saw Sora again. I don't mind that. I like Roxas. I, again, no, it's fine. I, I like to hate on that because everyone blew it out of proportion. It's not that bad. It's not that bad. It doesn't take eight hours. It takes three at most, maybe. It's a long... It's longer don't than trust, it should be. Don't trust her. <laughs> it, look, I'm a speedrunner. I got through in three <laughs> hours. Look, it takes I'll, three. I have, the, I have the recording. Multiply that by at least seven. <laughs> it's... Okay. You, it's you, not you seven hours. No, it's not. You struggled. You struggled in that segment to get the ball off the no, ground. No, no. <laughs> like, like, I just remember... Because, look. Okay. This is the thing very quick tangent when that game came out it came out uh this is gonna, i was actually this gonna, gonna be, agree with you on this this is gonna Go be i think i know where you're going yeah so this is gonna be da- date us all a little bit i believe it came out in f- fifth grade <laughs> either fourth or fifth grade i want to say uh probably fifth actually and it was on like winter break or it was like spring break or something i remember specifically because i had like a week of absolutely nothing and that game coincidentally came out like the day or like the day of or like a day after break started and i was like Dude, Kingdom Hearts 2, I was so fucking hyped for that mm-hmm. game. I had a week to do nothing. Like, when you're a kid in school, that's like a fucking dream come true, dude. So I was like, I'm going to play Kingdom Hearts 2. I'm going to play through it. I pop it in. I have all this time to play. I wasted so much time playing as Roxas, <laughs> I didn't even get to play as Sora. And then by the time I got to Sora's stuff, it wasn't that long. But, like, as a kid, you, you your time is precious. I Can so, I one-up you here? Actually, I had the exact opposite experience in one way because I that was like during a small period of time when my mom would limit the amount of screen time. No, <laughs> I do I do remember that like in general with people having that. That's a bad combination. It's that's really bad. I so, was like, Mom, can you imagine so? So you're like, really, Mom? Do you know that this is a formative experience in my life? <laughs> <laughs> and so like so that's upsetting. But yeah, like your the time is so precious, and at the time. All I wanted to see was the continuation of my good buddy Sora's storyline. And uh, awfully, coming off of Kingdom Hearts 1, it's like, yeah. what's what the fuck's going to happen? I agree with you. 100%. It's upsetting. As a child, I agree with you. I was like, like who the fuck is it's, this nobody? That's, that's, who, who the fuck is this nobody? Roxas. Whoa. Where's that's Sora? how people felt when when they f- fucking pulled the rug out from them on uh, Metal Gear Solid yeah, exactly. 2. They pulled an with, MGS2 with on them, and it fucking works. Like, wh- it's cool now, but yeah. at the time... You're with me here, right? I, I, at the I was time, so like, upset. I didn't care, but going back, like, oh, this is, like, a weird, like, they keep going, like, the cutscenes to, like, the weird, like, fading, like, white uh, noise screens, like, oh, reconstructing the memories, like, what is going on here? Like, yeah, it's interesting. This is completely different than anything. Like, the quality of the storytelling in Kingdom Hearts 2 literally jumps up by just, like, magnitudes in the it first It does, part. Like, and, it's like... It's crazy how much different it is. It is, that's true, and it's much more of a... It's unfortunately for better or for worse it's much more of a uh, uh linear game it is and I-, I didn't remember that playing it but when i got back to it i remember cold you were like oh you just mash triangle until i get through the game i was like hmm, how much of that is true and i was like oh, it's a hundred that's a hundred percent true there's way less platforming in the levels like you don't are you're not exploring them as much it's mainly just going on like along a straight line and like that's okay if the level is cool but some of them aren't great I just don't remember enjoying Kingdom Hearts 2 in the same way that I enjoyed 1. The story line, the storytelling and the storyline is definitely a step up because yeah. they had a lot more time to, like, delve into the actual Kingdom Hearts story. Yeah, and there's uh, just a lot more of, like, talking with Sora and, like, Donald and Goofy people. Like, the dialogue between those three characters and everyone else in the world is, like, actual... Like, it's actually happening again. Like, if, if you go back and play Kingdom Hearts 1, they barely talk to each other. Like, no one talks like Donald and Goofy, like, Leon and them. Like, no yeah. one has an interaction in this one. They're all, like, conversing with each other. And it's like, oh, like... No, and it is pretty there cool. There are a real group of, like, things happening now. And, like, that's way more interesting. And the worlds are interesting, too. The characters, like, the Mulan. They, and, like, yeah, like, that was cool. Also, I forgot that Auron from Final Fantasy X appears in the Hades uh, underworld, yeah. which was like... I was like, what the fuck He's is... He's great. Like, he, was in, the, he was in the first one yeah. too, but he was what? no, he, he was wasn't on the first one. Really? I don't think so. I thought he was in the first one, but he didn't say anything. Uh, unless he might he have been in. Like I think it's when you first tournament when you first walk into the yeah, you see him walking out of the tournament tournament at Olympus, and you're like, that's Orin. He might be one of like the crazy ass yeah. bosses. I don't think point. you fight him, but you do see him walking out of the. Hmm. But yeah, yeah, I haven't gotten too far in Kingdom Hearts two. I'm about like eight hours into it so i've just beat uh roxas uh area no uh <laughs> <laughs> honestly though <laughs> no i i think i i just finished uh the underworld or the olympus coliseum fight or whatever so okay uh that was again not as exciting like the boss fights are su- super simple like 
press triangle, do the just button. limit break, limit break, do the time events, user overdrive, valor form. Like, I do like the forms, and also I didn't the realize forms are this. Cool. Uh, they Brave, gave all, like valor, valor or whatever, but wisdom. like wisdom, wisdom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't Final. realize if you Final. activate them, like your costume change carries over into a cutscene if you get into it, and like oh, that's, that's, like, cool. that's a neat little like oh, yeah. thing that happens, or like, and also the way that you. Wonder if that's a final mix thing. I don't. I don't know. It might be, but like the menus change in each world, so they, like they match the world design, like that kind yeah. of stuff is really cool. Uh, but again, the actual level design that game super simple and it is, and it's a little upsetting. Um, I will say that. Uh, easily my favorite part of that game is all of the Kingdom Hearts stuff, like the actual like mm. mainline storyline events. Uh, all of the organization fights, fucking lit. Even yeah. the guitar one. Uh, I kind of like. I just that did one. that one. That one's shit. <laughs> what the fuck? It's fine. I mean, like you they're all triangle. It's, they're it's all triangle. intriguing to me because like a lot of those like the, all of the scripted events that yeah. happen in there like it's linear, sure, but like. Man, there's some anime ass stuff. I, yeah, there. I will say it looks it's, cool. It's like, insane. Have you fought Axel yet? Uh, no, not yet. Well, okay. I mean, as Roxas, I have, but. Uh, but yeah, okay. So there's like, that fight was pretty. Yeah, cool. like it's cool the way like, although this is also kind of a, an annoying thing is that the game is basically cut into like arena fights. Like you move cutscene, and then the objective thing pops up and says clear the enemy room or like clear the enemies from this room, and that, that happens a lot. I would much rather to just go through the game and have that happen naturally, but it doesn't work like that. Uh, but it is cool when you do the boss fights. It like does like a bunch of like cutscene, like camera cuts, to, like the people that you're fighting. It's oh, it looks cool. awesome! Yeah, uh, like it, the game looks great. So that was my uh, Kingdom killer. Hearts. Uh, it's still good. I will beat Kingdom Hearts too, but uh, I probably I'm not gonna go back and do all like the. Uh, not gonna get Ultima Weapon Blade or whatever. I'm not you're gonna, not gonna fight Sephiroth. I might give Sephiroth a shot. I tried it on Kingdom Hearts one, died immediately. I was like, okay, I'm not. Gonna He's hard. Do that. He's tough. Uh, but I, I didn't even give it a second. I didn't want to fight the Ice Golem because Ice Golem is boring as fuck. Uh, mm-hmm. I just didn't want to waste my time with You didn't that. fight Kurt Zisa? Didn't fight Kurt Zisa, the, Phantom. The, uh, the Phantom? No, skip every both of them. Time, every time. Yeah, I know. That's why I did it. <laughs> I especially wouldn't have fought Kurt Zisa because even in Final Mix, you don't get a reward from it besides experience. Uh, mm, oh. Phantom, you get like an upgrade. And they added in Final Mix, you get a new Keyblade if you fight Ice Golem and a Keyblade at Sephiroth. Oh, I didn't... Wow, okay. You get the one-winged angel if you kill Sephiroth, which is a cool sword. Oh, boy. What are we going to do to fix that? All right, I'll do it. Yeah, that's Kingdom Hearts. I'll probably beat Kingdom Hearts 2 and then attempt one of the side, like, story games. I don't know which one. don't know what order to play them in because they're just... Uh, Birth by Sleep is the one you want to do. Okay, I will do that then. Uh, Yeah. Kind of the that's the one you want to do. Three three hundred and fifty eight uh, cowboys over squared of days isn't. Uh, you could do three hundred and fifty eight over two billboards outside of Mississippi. <laughs> three hundred and fifty eight <laughs> billboards outside of Mississippi. Um, <laughs> it's a lot of billboards. Okay. Oh, Look, they have a whole lot. I guess maybe Dream Drop Distance. I don't, I don't think they have Dream Drop Distance on the mix, on the final mix. Right. Culture, I have initiated uh, Figure Eight Protocol. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, other small game I've been playing. Uh, small amount of time. A little bit of Monster Hunter. I will get into the breach. Okay. Uh, Dragon Ball Fighters. I've been keeping up with that, increasing my skills. Uh, the online that game still not 100 perfect, which is frustrating because I've been kicked out of matches online multiple times, and that uh, makes me quit. I stop playing the game when that happens because that frustrates me. Uh, if the connection drops, that's really annoying. Yeah. Uh, but the other game I've been playing that I've been playing a lot last couple days is Into the Breach. I saw you playing that, and I've heard a lot of people talking about it. I was uh, curious to hear what you have to say. I think it's awesome. Uh, it's from the people who did F- made FTL. Did you guys play that game? Um, no, I haven't played it, but I'm well aware of what it is. It's, uh, it's, not, for, it's not for me. Okay. Uh, not for you. I liked FTL a lot. Uh, sci-fi, like, roguelike game, run-based thing. This is uh, similar that it's run-based, but it's not based on, like, ships, or it's not even the same type of combat or, it's, like, gameplay. It's basically an Advanced Wars-esque or, like, I've heard it's like chess. Eh, chess. Like it's it's like a it's a tactical like RPG game basically okay. at its core. But the chess part comes in in that each level is kind of built as like a puzzle because there's you can like solve it if you try hard enough. Because the way the game is set up is that you choose a team of three max. You either can choose a uh, pre-built team or if you unlock squads, you can customize them and build them yourself. And the combat in that game is based on like. Pushing enemies, if, it, if you hit another attack, it'll like push them one square back or two squares back. If it hits another enemy, they take extra damage. You can push them into mountains. If the mountain cracks, it does extra damage to them. Or you can pull them towards you, knock them off cliffs. Like movement by like tile squares is like the main like focus point of the combat. And when the enemy team spawns, 
they always go first in the game and you they telegraph each move so like these bugs will move and attack the cities and you can see on their thing like okay here's a red square targeting the city this attack will connect no matter what unless you push them away pull them away kill them or whatever and so it works by like knocking those enemies around like out of position to hit the cities out of position to hit you you can knock them into other enemies get them to target other enemies and like create chain reactions so you just don't take any damage and like doing that for like each run like if you do a complete run i i did just beat quote unquote the game you can uh it's based on a set of islands and so if you do like five missions on one island you unlock another one complete that you can go to the final island and beat it or you can go to the other two islands and keep going but i just wanted to see if i could beat the game i did uh and it I, I will go back and keep playing it because like the different mechs are like super fun to like do different combos with like hmm. it's it's super awesome it has a great soundtrack too it's got a cool sound but hmm. i liked it a lot everyone's been talking about this and talking about their uh well everyone i mean like uh game journalists and yeah. uh, uh people on twitter and i uh, reddit i've seen it on reddit um and on steam actually it's blown up on steam so it's one of those indie games where you're like is this really that good um <laughs> because like your mouse every other yeah because i'm mickey mouse no but like every other week there's like like uh what's that fucking game called slay the spire or mm-hmm. whatever it is like there's which looks cool too but there's a bunch of those like uh like indie strategy or card based games where you're like mm, how good is this really but it's from ftl and ftl is beloved by many so yeah. i was curious about it there's a high pedigree like i i like it a lot i like the like tactical element a lot because it reminds me you know of like fire emblem advanced wars those kind of games but also kind of the like the strategy layer of like thinking like this many moves ahead like i would literally sit there because if you have like a meter that is connected to these buildings that are on each map you have to protect the buildings from being hit by the bugs otherwise you die if they hit them uh and so like you're looking at this like mess of like things that are happening there's like five enemies like two of them are attacking your mechs three of them are attacking the buildings like okay i only have three mechs like how could i possibly hit each one out of the way to like stop this damage and so you have to like play this mental like mind game of like if i hit this guy here knock him into this one he'll hit this guy knock him like three squares this way and like it's just this crazy like string of events and when you pull it off it looks like like a fucking rube goldberg machine of just like things like happening like one after another and then it just Mm. plays out like okay i got perfect like perfect mission run right there how long is like a mission not very long at all like five ten minutes maybe like they're all they're very fast like my i think my final run through of the complete game was maybe an hour 20 and that's because i spent time like sitting down and not doing turns you know Mm. it's turn-based so you can spend as much time as you want Hmm. Um, but yeah and you're like you're meant to die when you do die or lose like the mission you have the option to choose one mech pilot because you pilot each of your mechs can either have a pilot or it's unmanned uh the pilots give like extra bonuses you can choose one to bring back to the timeline with you because the game is set up the story is kind of like a all you need is kill, or as Americans might know it, uh, live, die, repeat. Edge of tomorrow. Edge of tomorrow. Live, die, repeat. God damn. Uh, in which the main f- forces, your team, is being sent back in time to stop this uh, bug, like, apocalypse. Oh, uh, okay. And so when you die, that explains you, the, the timeline resets. Yeah. Of it. And that's how you reset the mm-hmm. time. You get to bring one character back with you. Um, that's interesting with do they level up do they get... they do they level up a couple times they'll get like so you bring them back as they're in their, in their leveled up yeah, state they have their like a veteran pilot abilities. yeah pretty much that's interesting you can only bring one though uh but you can unlock like you can, can you keep bringing that one back through? yeah you can bring them as long as they don't die if they die they're gone damn okay interesting yeah and so and even when you beat the game when i beat the game like the pilot that i beat it with i was able to keep them and bring them back with me hmm so I could put them into other mechs. And now, what if you were thrown into harm's way and the only way to, to save the world was to sacrifice your veteran pilot? I've done that. Because you have to... I, there's times when it's like, okay, if they hit this building, like it's going to be game over. So I'm just going to put my mech in front of it and just take the hit. And sometimes you just have to die. Like hmm. If the pilot dies, it's fine because your mech will respawn the next round. But if if you lose, I mean, you're out of the game. So, hmm. But it's, I've intrigued. had a lot of fun with it. I'm interested. How does it compare to Mario vs. Rabbids? Uh, I haven't played Mario vs. Rabbids, but the similarities are... Uncanny. Uncanny. <laughs> uh, no, but they're... I mean, Look, the it's, XCOM... It's 2D XCOM. No, yeah, I mean, either. XCOM, Advanced Wars, like Fire Emblem, all those games have the same kind of like tactical strategy element to it. This mm-hmm. one is a little bit more puzzle-ish, but like you can still do that in Fire Emblem. Like, you can... you every fire emblem game could play out the same way you know if you just play it like the right movements but mm-hmm. like 
but each run is randomized in this so you can't like cheese it like that but there's like mm. a ton of different abilities for the mechs like one of them i had will drop smoke screens normally in a smoke screen you can't attack or uh use an ability but uh and that works for you and the enemies but the mech team i was using one of the mechs has a passive that gives all the smoke uh, electric damage so if an oh. enemy is inside of it they'll take extra damage but you won't so you can use it as like a cover or, like build like walls of smoke so they have to either move into it or they won't interesting um, there's there's a lot of like different and i haven't unlocked all the teams yet because you have to the way you unlock them is that you do like certain achievements in the game with the teams and then you would get coins to buy new teams when you fail but hmm. i don't have the final tiers of teams yet but hmm. it's it's interesting that sounds kind of cool i have to check it out yeah i have been playing that and will continue playing that for some time probably nice now, Jordan, can mm-hmm. you please ask Coulter what he's been playing? <laughs> uh, Coulter, can you please ask Dane to ask you what you've been playing? Uh, Dane, can you please ask me what I've been playing? What have you been playing, Coulter? Oh, Thanks I'm, for asking. I've actually... Uh, thank you for asking Coulter to ask me to ask <laughs> Coulter. You're welcome. And thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I actually started up Uncharted Lost Legacy. Oh my oh, god! Because- because um, I was waiting for a video to render on the computer, so I could not do anything on the computer. I had to do something on the PS4. I had to play. You had game. to had do, do something. There's no way not to. Look, you had to have fun. I had to have fun. <laughs> Only one game could service me in the right way. <laughs> Only one game could could please your <laughs> those two Nathan Drake female leads. Oh, that's right. Um, Both of them uh, service me quite nicely. They're nice. This is. This is a lot. We're getting back to creepy territory. <laughs> okay, yeah. Look, we're, we're, taking the, we're taking the train back to creepy towns. Playing stroking. <laughs> Just get the Look, disclaimer. We sure are sh- We are shooting from the hip. Uh, I don't know why you said it like that. I don't now. know. So, yeah, well, I uh, uh, I took the shrink wrap off of my pink. No, uh, of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. You always want to keep one of those on. <laughs> <laughs> of the game. At all times. Slid it at in. All, every time. <laughs> why does this all. Why does this apply to both? I don't know. Because <laughs> playing video games is a it's sexual very experience. Similar. Yeah, it it's is. very similar. It's a pleasurable act. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. So I played the game. There you go. I grabbed hold of my controller. <laughs> Stop. You can't do this. And I went in. I can't do this. And I fingered the buttons hard. God damn. Look, you had your fingers all over the buttons. Please, uh, parents, stop listening. <laughs> Look, children. Mom, stop dad, listening. I know you're listening. Everyone, don't. Stop listening. Look, uh, we'll lose our only listeners if maybe, they stop listening. Now. Yeah, maybe maybe they're intrigued. Maybe this is the first thing that's actually done it for them. I hope not. Listen, okay, I played this game. Look, you are you. I started almost. the game. Okay, you started. Right. It. You played the game. Here we go, guys. You grasped I started the it. controller. <laughs> Uh, I grasped the controller and I moved the analog stick, which is about the extent <clears throat> of the first uh, thirty minutes. Now, since you started this game, uh, would it be fair to say that you haven't yet reached the climax? That's of- correct. Okay, okay. Um, but you yeah. you will. So I played just like a couple hours. Um, so like two hours. <laughs> a couple. Yes. My God. <laughs> Can I just speak of the game? You lasted a while. That's a long... Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, I didn't... The first level was, like, the whole uh, E3 presentation or whatever, which was just a walking simulator. Yeah. yeah I didn't um, so Uncharted. Mm, Man, that's a hot take. Damn. Uh, <laughs> it's it, a savage burn. I feel like the other... At least one or two of the other Uncharted games were like this, too. Maybe, maybe just Uncharted 4. But it takes a really long time to get to, like, actual gameplay where it, like, opens up in any way. Like, just a walking simulator for so long. I agree. I know Uncharted 3 definitely did that, but they, they added some shooting a little bit early. But anyways, I don't they know how long They did go story heavy is. in the beginning of 3. That's right. Specifically. But. Um, so yeah, the, I didn't like how it was just running and jumping, uh, and <laughs> pressing square, maybe if you get caught, um, you are describing little part. uncharted to a T for me. Uh, so, uh, you're not helping our, my case against Jordan. With I'm not, but all. it did look quite good, but I, I had already <laughs> seen the full E3 demo. Yeah. So whatever. Yep. Uh, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, mom, <laughs> I got to the part where, damn it. Uh, you go to the island where all the different things are, uh, all the different objectives. There's like four objectives or something like that on the towers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did one of them so far. Mm. The one where you jump on the platforms and then the guys swing their little. Yeah. I I like that puzzle. That was a cool puzzle. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I liked that. I like, um, 
I like shooting guys. Yeah. And I also, uh, at first, the banter was a little cheesy. It always is when you start out, but it, for some reason, in Uncharted, it, it does grow on you. Like, it somehow I, is okay. I, uh, uh, really quickly, my dad's been playing through Last of Us for the mm-hmm. first time, uh, and so I, over the past few days, I'll kind of, like, walk past and see, like, what, what part he's at. And uh, it reminds me that um, no one does, like, environmental, like, or not environmental, but, like, um, immersive storytelling quite like Naughty Dog. Like, when say what you will about Uncharted, but while you're playing, like, especially The Last of Us, which is a little bit different, but they do the same thing where, like, they'll remark on things in the environment yeah. that are actually relevant to what you're doing. So, like, if you're walking past, like, like a painting or, like, in Last of Us, they walk past, like, an old movie poster or something, Ellie will be like... Oh, like say something about it, mm-hmm. or like in in Last of Us or uh, in Uncharted, if you walk past like some view or like some crazy like temple or something, they'll be like, "Oh, that's interesting," and they'll like say something that you're looking at, and like the way that they do it is really seamless, and it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I will say I have heard that the characters in uh, Lost Legacy like are pretty good, like well written characters, so it's probably not like that surprising that they end up being somewhat likable. No, they are well written and like the the interesting part is that it's sort of like the the unlikely pairing that gets stuck with each other and you mm-hmm, know, they're yeah. stuck with each other and they have to live to like they have to learn to love each other. Not really, but they have to like put up with each other essentially. Mm-hmm. And it's some there's some interesting like sarcastic dialogue between uh between the two characters. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how they have that stuff and the tongue-in-cheek kind of stuff and a little bit of comedy, stuff like that. And uh, There is some drama. Yeah, uh, I haven't gotten too far yet, but um, it's it's weird how it kind of works. Yeah, I um, like it. I think it's actually pretty good. Yeah, so I, I was skeptical going into it, um, but I am warming up to it at this point, and I will continue, uh, which is... A lot for me. I don't. That always, is a lot for you. I don't always can. I I don't always choose to continue a game that I start afresh. Yeah, but. I think you'll learn to love the characters, and there there is some interesting gameplay there, especially for Uncharted. There's a lot of things that uh, might be surprising to you, Jordan. It's not completely linear. I know that it has a faux it's, open world. It uh, is faux. It's it, still it is shooting faux. and running and climbing things, which is literally all Uncharted is and ever was. Yeah, that's and that's, ever will be. That's fair, but like I don't know. There's something so like. Listen, what's wrong there's with that? So, there's something so charming there's nothing charming. wrong with it the first two times i did it when they repeat that same trick over and over again it gets repetitive and they haven't improved upon that formula like they, had, they never improve the shooting of the games they never improve the ai they never improve any of the encounters they're always the same thing there's going to be a guy that you're going to shoot that's a big dude with a shotgun who's going to run at you there's, there's going to be a big dude with heavy armor ha- has like a rocket launcher there always is and there always will be in those games like they never change the formula and like that i don't want to play that again i suppose i they mean, haven't Prove okay. me wrong. I no, mean, I mean, you're not wrong. But they like, realized that it wasn't broken, so they didn't fix it. And shame on them for not attempting to improve themselves. They did, and it was called Last of Us. <laughs> they did, and then they regressed with <laughs> Uncharted 4. They, yeah, they perfected uh, the, their craft with Last of Us, one might say. And you uninstalled it uh, so you can play Battlefront. At one time, yes. The greatest They're both uninstalled now. Look, and I and I really wonder: Are you ever going to go back and play Last of Us? I this is a tangent. I could. I think. I think. I don't. I'm not against it. How about this? And I felt a lot of pressure to do so. Now, how about maybe this? once Last of Us Two comes out, I'll feel a lot of mounting pressure. For no, how about this? Such a thing. Go how ahead. about this? Go ahead, Carvel. <laughs> now, how about this? Shaniqua or whatever you said. Before. If weird astro. Go if ahead. you play and complete Last of Us. And if I someone won't be watching Breaking time, Bad. Jordan will watch Breaking Bad. I won't. That's not an equal trade. <laughs> what? Yeah, it is. Uncharted is like 10 hours long. Breaking Bad is like 500. Last of Us. Sorry. Uh, Last of Us. Uh, oh, look, so like 20. Look. It's Jordan. it's a 40-hour game. I what are we going to have to do to get you to Jesus play? Jesus Christ. No, it's not. Bad. It's like a 10-hour game. Nothing. I just need to f- one day sit down and find the time Fucking to watch hell, it. Man. Listen, video games are coming out. I like to play video games in my free time. Listen, sure. I'm not going to rush Jordan to watch the show. He's going to... He. I feel confident that he will watch it I at will, some point. Once I start it, like, I'll start... Like, I did that with Daredevil. I did that with Jessica Jones. Like, I watch... Once I start it, I watch it. I haven't started yet. Therefore, I will not be watching it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm I'm not gonna push Jordan to watch. You better watch that, that before Kingdom Hearts three comes out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have at least four years. Walter's gonna be in it. He's gonna be in your party. <laughs> <laughs> Lols. Walter. 
I am the one who opens the door to the heart. That's uh. Damn, that was gonna happen. Really that was good. not good. <laughs> it wasn't. That was bad. It you wasn't weren't. Good? Should we, we did shit from the hip with that? I'm, I tried. Gonna have a showdown with Zayanowert. Yeah. Zayano and Doeo. I love how they complicate the story so much with the nobodies in the yeah. organization thirteen. They were like, "Well, how can it make less sense?" <laughs> I, like, that how was can we complicate. That it? was actually one of the things I was wondering about because I know that Kingdom Hearts gets fucking the story gets absurd, but I was like, "It's like I can follow it at this point." Like, can you though? The organization doesn't make a lot of sense at the start, but you can like it's being filled out. I was like, "Where does it get? Where does it jump? Like the ship to get crazy town?" Now, no, it's not that crazy. Like, it you, is crazy. It, it Explain has no, the plot. The plot, okay, but the plot hasn't been explained to me in the game yet. Like it's still building out. Like it's explain meant to be- what you know so far of of <laughs> like you, you want me much. <laughs> okay, so Jesus Christ. at the at the start of at the start, I just want to know at the start of Kingdom Hearts Wait, 2, it's video game corner. It's perfect. Sora is in uh, the chain of memories chamber. He's stuck in the rebuild chamber uh, that Nomine is attempting to help rebuild his memories. Wait, right. Hold on, just real fast on the subject of you uh, complaining about Roxas. Um, when you do actually get to that chamber, when Sora opens up, it's lit. It's and fucking he, lit. It, it he, is. He has like short shorts at one point. And, like, like, he's t- uh, and they acknowledge the fact like, that he yeah, needs so a new outfit. He's, yeah. He's a little, he's looking a little he's weird. He's grown up. And then, uh, he, he's grown when he up. puts on the black. He looks lit. Uh, I was going to say uniform. I'm going to say suit. N- neither mm. of those really work. Outfit. The black mm-hmm. outfit. Like, yeah. Is dope. It, it is does dope. look dope with the cool little, like, it's so anime. It is. It's like Tetsuya Nomura. And he like, sees like, Donald and Goofy. Yeah, it's like Tetsuya yeah. Nomura was like, I gotta go in. It's my time. It's my time to go in. And he went in. Yeah. It's the best. It's like, do you have it in black? And they did. And they did. He asked his, uh, <laughs> uh, his department, do you have it in black? We do. And they did. And they they're like, say no more, Sam. <laughs> See. They said, hi. <laughs> And go ahead. Okay, go resume. Uh, oh, okay. The story. Uh, Sora is stuck in this chamber uh, that isn't explained in this game, but I assume is in Chain of Memories, which I haven't played to completion, nor will I, because I have sucks ass. Uh, uh, about it. You okay. haven't played it. I don't know if you can say it sucks ass. I have played it. I haven't played it to completion. Oh, uh, okay. Fair because enough. Because it sucks ass. <laughs> Fair. Uh, anyways. Card game. It's bad. Sora's memories are being bad. rebuilt, and because of that, he's like semi turned into a. Why are they being rebuilt? It's not clear. <laughs> they haven't explained that part. But yet. how did we get from the end of Kingdom Hearts One to? They there? don't explain that yet. It's in Chain of Memories. Chain of Memories is the bridge between Kingdom Hearts One and Two. It's, it is one point five. That's yeah. That's what it is. Okay. Uh, anyways, Roxas is. Well, it's technically not one point five because one point five. One point five exists. It's, it's yeah, technically one point two five. It's, uh, oh. it's we're, essentially we're it's essentially the halfway point between one and two, but not one point five because that exists. And it's anyways, not Chain of Memories. It's so. certainly not that. <laughs> There's a mysterious organization 13 that is being displayed at the start of the game. People right. are talking about them. There's a man we don't know his name yet. Led uh, by they don't. His name isn't made clear, but it is Diz is his name. Uh, he's reconstructing some sort of like thing. That's for the Sora. red guy with the thing. Yes, with a red. Uh, uh, Christopher Lee. Yeah. Sure. Well, yeah. Let's fucking go. Sure. Uh, it is a lot actually, of big yeah. names. Uh, voice acting in, in that game. Uh, yeah. Some points. Uh, anyways. Uh, they're rebuilding Sora's memories. They need to have some sort of cipher for Sora's memories, and which that's is, that's Roxas. Right. He's a nobody, which is what happens. Which when is a, a a person of strong will and heart is turned into a heartless. Right. That's it what creates happens. a nobody. It creates a nobody because and a nobody is uh, is a nobody. shell. It's nothing. It's, it's like nobody. They're nothing. And there has to, but there has to be technically. I guess there has to be something from nothing. Yeah. There, which I is mean, the nobody. The heart, once a heart is ripped out of a body, what's yeah. left? Nothing. Sure, it's like the soul. If you lose your heart, you're nobody. And so that's what Roxas is. But Roxas is someone. Mm, he's a nobody. But he, like, but it's weird he that... He wasn't a nobody. He got turned into a nobody. Well, there are there are nobodies that are, like, those white, like, weird Yeah, things, they're not the strong but ones. But then, yeah. okay, so, okay, so... Organization Ro- 13 is comprised of nobodies. The leaders of Organization 13 are nobodies. Right. But they're the strongest nobodies, and they control... But the do we know ones. who the... Who the real who like who they came from yes no we don't okay but i thought we knew that xehanort was ansem's nobody no we don't know that yet we know ansem is in there we know that diz is in there we don't know we haven't heard of xehanort yet okay or ansem no ansem gets revealed early on it as by your playing as roxas but who is ansem then is ansem isn't a nobody he's a you're right or is he mm, the no story hasn't i think xehanort is ansem's nobody. listen 
the story will get there eventually. Okay. I'm not at that okay. point okay. yet. Okay, so continue then. Okay, and so Sora <laughs> comes out of the chamber of memories. His memories are rebuilt. Sure. Roxas is stowed away into his mind. His other half is completed. Right. And Sora, at the start of the game, says, I need to go find Riku and the king. And then he ser- goes out and searches for the king. He's being impeded by Organization 13, who's trying to get Roxas back because they need him for some mysterious power. And and the only reason they're going after Sora specifically is because Roxas is Sora's is, nobody. Yes, and they need Roxas. But weren't they after Sora in, in Kingdom Hearts 1? Ansem was after Sora. Yeah, it's not made clear, although... And Riku. In 1.5... One, in 1. And 5, Kairi. Y- yes, I know those are all people in Kingdom Hearts. But they were all being actively pursued by... Ansem. Ansem, who we are led to believe... This is Kingdom Hearts 1. Do you want me to explain that story too? I mean, I could, but I don't have the I time. thought we were talking about the Kingdom Hearts story as a whole. I don't... It, you didn't make that clear. Okay, I mean. so continue then. Anyways. Just like they didn't make clear several points in yeah. Kingdom Hearts. In That's Kingdom why I'm Hearts trying to... In f- 1.5, they actually... In the re- in final mix, they've included a Organization 13 optional boss in the game. Okay. To Who link, is it? Uh, Ze- Zemnos or something? I don't, I'm not sure. It's Anthem X is Zemnus his... Is, Zemnus. Zemnus. Zemnus is uh, the final boss of Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. Uh, it's his... Mm. Uh, his organization outfit guy, you fight him. Xehanort is the heartless of Ansem. Zemnus that's, is the nobody. That's yeah. what it is, okay. So you fight Ansem, Ansem's nobody uh, in Kingdom Hearts to link them together. Okay. Anyways, now we're in Kingdom Hearts 2. The The heart has been sealed. They killed the darkness of the heart or whatever. Sure, of Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, but now somehow King Mickey has escaped the darkness. Maybe Riku has also. Now they're searching for them. Okay. Are you happy? Does it yes. make sense so far? Uh, no, not but you, sort of. But okay. it is. That's a very simple way to put it. It the story honestly is very convoluted. It Don't, is. It's I so mean, complicated. The, Kingdom Hearts One is a very simple story. There's it nothing is. there. No, it is. But the, but <laughs> once they get to Kingdom Hearts Two, and especially like we're not even we haven't even touched on Birth by Sleep. No, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. Or Chain of Memories. That's or what I'm three, saying. Or Dream Drop Distance, which leads directly into Three. And and I didn't. If you had asked me to explain those, I wouldn't have. But Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2, sure. the story is self-explained right now. It is somewhat simple. It's but self-explanatory. It's not. But, but like, it, in the context of, like, especially Birth by Sleep, which goes into uh, the beginning of the Keyblade Wars, the creation of the Keyblades, sure. uh, a lot of things that are just ridiculous. Separated from the game right now. It is. But but as a whole, the, the entirety, of, like, the entire saga that you need to know, that everyone needs to know before going into Kingdom Hearts 3 is so immense and dense that I feel yes. like uh, it's a big barrier for people. It's going to be a big barrier. I agree. I think people just don't even worry about that. Yeah. They just go, okay, new Kingdom Hearts, I'm going to play. Well, yeah, of course, I mean, but like, I feel like when people courses. when people are getting back into Kingdom Hearts three, I, that. I guarantee I guarantee you that people are gonna be like, what? Like people are gonna be like, yeah, sure, this gameplay is lit, but what the fuck is happening in the storyline? Because they're not gonna have any idea what's going on. I mean, in Kingdom Hearts two, they basically replay the entirety of Kingdom Hearts one cutscenes in Roxas's like memory rebuild sequence. Yeah. I can imagine a situation like that happening in Kingdom Hearts three. I don't know. It's probably gonna be implemented better. I would hope. We'll see. But. I don't disagree. Uh, the story is confusing, but as of right now, like it hasn't jumped the shark yet. But yeah, and I don't, it will I don't know before it, the end. I don't know if it does in Kingdom Hearts two. Like I don't know if it goes crazy town in that one. It does. Okay. I mean, you don't seem to understand the story. I don't. <laughs> I remember. I remember that I don't understand it uh, even more so towards the end. Okay. Well. There's a good video. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it explains the entire history of Kingdom Hearts, and it's approximately half an hour long. Yeah. Which was about what my explanation was. <laughs> so we're getting close to it. And we haven't even touched on like, <laughs> like maybe 70% of the storyline. So how does Kingdom Hearts X Kai fit in? I don't know. I haven't, I haven't gone to X Cross. X Cross. Uh, Thank town, you. What City about Center. Unchained? What, what about Unchained? Recoded? I don't know. That's it. It'll be filled right. in later. Th- those ones aren't important. Guys, uh, Coulter, we said please. we weren't going to talk about anime, but we basically did. Coulter, please and continue we went with, farther then. Please continue with what you were playing. Well, that was it. Uh, that's as far as I've gotten so far. I said I will try to play more. Okay. Uh, and I have another topic that I put on the list, but uh, I'm going to save it for next time because it is not time sensitive. Okay. Fair enough. Um, Dane, what have you been playing? Can you please <laughs> ask me to ask Coulter... To ask me again why I didn't ask you in the first place to ask me why Coulter didn't ask me what I was playing. Did you get that? <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. What have you been playing? Uh, that works. 
Um, not a whole lot, honestly. Uh, I... <laughs> Well, one th funny thing that happened is uh, I downloaded this game called Warhammer uh, Vermintide 2 that I thought, wow, this is like Fantasy Left 4 Dead. That sounds cool. It you has Diablo-style... Like huh? You pitched it like that to me. That's the way it was pitched to me from, like, reviews and gameplay online. I was like, okay, this looks like it could be, like, a Fantasy-esque Left 4 Dead, which it basically is. Um, oh, it has Diablo-style loot. That sounds cool. Wait, it has skill and talent progression? I'm in. So I thought, wow, I'll buy this game. It's like 25 bucks. Maybe Jordan will play it with me. Maybe Coulter will play it with me. Maybe an another friend will play it with me. Who knows? Uh, I played it. I thought it was pretty fun. I still think it's pretty fun. You downloaded it. You played it a little bit with me. You said you hated it. No, no you didn't say that. But you did refund the game. I you didn't am, say it wasn't fun. It, I, I found zero fun in that game. I'll be, I'm being 100% no, honest with you. Sure. I did not ever see myself playing that game again. That's fair. Damn. Savagery. Look, I I still think there's something fun about it. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like brain dead or something, or like have that, some. That's sort of, the thing like, to me is that the game was incredibly boring. It's literally just it's like imagine Left for Dead, except all like there's no like the creativeness of the levels was next to none. The enemy design creativeness, like the attacks they do, n zero like diversity in there. Like it's all just very just boring, and you're just sitting there slashing your sword just like mindlessly killing these dudes over and over again and like you don't get any sort of feedback when you hit them the combat doesn't feel great like the start of the game i had a, like a rapier on my character i was like okay like this is a cool thing so like i was doing little Careful. stabby attacks and like slashing very quickly and i was like okay that was fun at the end of the game i got a new weapon it was a flail it felt the exact same like literally there's no like the animation was different but it just like there's no weight behind the attack there's nothing like special about it it's just me swinging this thing again and just walking through swaths of like rat <laughs> things like it was just i couldn't like find it like yeah i don't know there's something like fun about just it, like that left for dead gameplay of just there's something that feels good about i will say the combat doesn't feel quite as like weighted as i would like but i also don't know how they would do that when you're killing like hundreds of enemies at once like it's sort of like a like a diablo-esque like you know endless dungeon crawler kind but of diablo thing, but has it, skill and like button presses it involved does. that let you use abilities yeah i mean this... i think it's still it is in beta that like it's it's, it's not essentially in beta. it's coming out it's next essentially Friday. the final yeah it's essentially the final release but like with the first one they changed a bunch of stuff as it went along so i don't know i think the first one was actually free to play or maybe at, at one time was and they were working on like patches and stuff so we'll see but uh something is kind of fun about just uh teaming up with some people uh, in a little fantasy land with fun banter, just killing things. Uh, it was entertaining. but It's certainly not going to win Game of the Year. Uh, is it better than Left 4 Dead? No, it's not. Is it close? Probably not. But I think it's fun. But I also get your criticisms, so yeah. that's fair. Um, besides that, what have I been playing, actually? Not a whole lot. Um, Dane, what have you been playing? <laughs> you know, I'm so sure not a, don't know. honestly not a lot um for some reason okay, there's nothing else yeah there's not really anything else uh the only thing i was going to say is that for some reason i think uh next week <laughs> i'm gonna play uh final fantasy 15 on the pc um and i know and that you're not why i know that you're not happy about that uh I'm no even uh, mildly upset <laughs> uh no so like they this is the Royal Edition, which is a little bit upsetting. Uh, it, it comes with all the DLC. which It comes with a completed story, which I didn't get when it I bought does. the game. It does. So, so I'm a little interested because it does. they've apparently done a lot of revamps to the game in terms of patches, of story content, um, the actual DLC that they released, which apparently some people enjoyed uh, the episodes of the characters they released. Um, and then also they've added, like... The ability to traverse like the open world via boat, uh, and Bote. so you can like sail places now. Uh, and you, I guess they always had the flying car, but you can do that too. And then they also added like <laughs> because this game is so fucking absurd, they added a monster truck mode to the car, so you can just like go off roading with the car and do crazy stuff now, and like actually yeah. drive off yeah. like the beaten path. So that's somewhat interesting. Um, and then apparently they've done like some refinements to the combat and like, it's basically like essentially what the game should have been re when it released, um, You're right. <laughs> which is upsetting. That's definitely upsetting, but there's something when I was thinking back on that game, there's a, there's a playable demo right now on steam, uh, of the game. And so I downloaded it and I was like, 
I wonder, I wonder if this game holds up in terms of, like, what I remember liking about it, and I really do enjoy the characters, uh, and kind of, like, the, the mood of the game, and, like, the theme of the game, I think, is really interesting, and it's a very, uh, ballsy game in a lot of ways, it's super strange to, like, get in a car and, like, drive, but you're just sitting there, like, listening to music and listening to them, like, talk to each other, uh, which is super, kind of weird and maybe not even that fun. Uh, but like, it's just the, the whole game is just so strange that like, I, I'm like compelled to play it. And like, there's something that I enjoy about it. Um, and I, I think the combat's pretty fun. It's sim it's simplistic, but it's fun to look at. And yeah, when I was playing it on the PC, it looks very nice and is running at a, a high frame rate in uh, a very high resolution. And it's very pretty. Uh, and for some reason I thought, I kind of want to play this game and see what it could have been or what it should have been. So me too. I'm somewhat intrigued by it. Uh, it am, am I upset that I'm giving in to something that I'm vehemently against? Yes, but I kind of want to play it. Yeah, I'm strictly based on principle, not supporting that game ever again. Like, no, I know it is upsetting. Literally, the the story of the game already when it released had four empty chapters where conspicuously the characters you're with just weren't in your party didn't get explained in the story mode at all in that game oh guess what all the dlc story explains that because it was already pre-built from the start it's like Fuck yeah you that guys. that like, is upsetting that there's that and then there's like they there's just like, the story yeah, in general yeah, isn't the story great. is like, botched like, everything is bad they about have it. apparently fixed a lot of that and it is upsetting that there, this is even something that we're talking about and that it exists but for some reason, uh, I never beat that game when it first released. Uh, I'm there's some part of me that, for some reason, is really intrigued by it, uh, and I don't know why. But there's enough redeeming qualities there that make me want to go back and play. I mean, it. I platinum the game. Look, <laughs> I I think the game is very fun. I think it's a very unique game. It's certainly a far cry from any Final Fantasy that's ever been made. Uh, it's very Japanese, very strange, um, but has some weird like Western RPG influences too. So. I don't know. It's like a weird amalgamation of a lot of things that I like, um, but put together very poorly. Uh, but if this fixes some of it, I might actually really enjoy it. So we'll see. Yeah. I don't know. That's something on the horizon, though. I haven't been playing much this week. Cool. Well, the camera's dead, so... That's right. So soon... So will we. Now we are. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Um, guys. Mm -hmm. I think we've reached the end of the road. You bet. Unless there's something else that someone would like to add. Can we go back to Kingdom Hearts? That's, uh, Look, that's we a, didn't finish the, the story summary. To bring up. Guys, this has been episode 31. Uh, the first episode of season 2. Best Keyblade actually uh, was Lionheart. Uh, that's a cool one. Is that the uh, Lion King? No, it's the one, in Kingdom Hearts 1, you get it from Leon when you beat him in the uh, arena. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's a great, great Keyblade. Uh, Oblivion is a classic one as well. It is, but it kind of sucks arse. Does what? it, though? It has, like, the highest attack in the game. No, it doesn't. It's weak. It's weaker than... Do you remember Divine Rose, which is one you get from Bell? At, yes, uh, that's, that's, a, that's more a powerful than one. Oblivion. Oblivion also decreases Wait, your mana by one. Maybe it's only if you choose certain settings at the beginning of the game. That's I don't know. What did you choose? Uh, the staff, maybe? The shield? I'm not sure. I don't remember at that point. But also point. the questions, how you answer them. Oh, I chose medium. Also. Well, I mean, that doesn't determine the power of a Keyblade, though. That just is your strength. Well, uh, yeah, I don't I don't know for sure. But there's something that determines, like, your ability points and, like, where you start out yeah. and stuff like That's that. Your, those are the questions that you answer from what's-your-name on the beach mm -hmm. on Destiny Islands. Or from... They each ask you different questions. I don't know. Whatever the little questionnaire is, it, it determines that, I think. Yeah. And there's a specific way that you have to answer them to have the best chance of doing well in proud mode, I believe. Depending on what build you're going for. Yeah. I remember the, like, uh, when I was playing through the game, the best weapon I had access to was the Oblivion. But. Mm. Anyway. So, guys, every week, uh, this would be around the time that we pull a film out of a hat it's not a hat's bag uh but we're not doing that because we've pulled seven samurai and we haven't watched it yet <laughs> but we'll watch it next week for sure 100 percent. 100 percent. there's no getting around it we have to do absolutely it absolutely not we're watching seven so we're samurai. gonna watch seven samurai um can we commit to that yes and then we're gonna pull another film that night uh on the podcast live on air oh uh but instead of pulling a film we're not really going to do anything special. We're just going to do our outros and then get the okay, fuck out of here. Good. 
So, Coulter. They can find me at Can you Coulter please Potter. ask me to ask <laughs> Jordan it. where they can find him? Wait. No. Listen, guys, you can find me at Coulter Potter on Twitter and Instagram and Twitch. Uh, <clears> I haven't <throat> been streaming much lately, but... Um, but you maybe, will. You know what? I could. Look, you overruled the host. And you went with your own And bit. you will pay the price. What? I told you to. I told you oh. to. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Listen, I can't keep track of that, and it's it's just too late. It's okay. Too late for that. Bit. Look, I okay. Jordan, where can <clears throat> they find you? Are you looking at me? Look, he no, said I'm your not. name. Okay. Uh, you can find me, Jordan Miller, at the Killamilla on uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, whatever social media and video game services uh, you also have. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch, uh, where I also haven't streamed in a while. I might. We'll see. We don't know. We never know. Listen, I'll let you guys know when I'm on a consistent grind, all yeah. right? Yeah, when we put our uh, nose to the grindstone, y'all will know. That's uh, right. You can also find my uh, blog about anime on Tumblr at tenzo Taicho. How do you... I won't ask. I and, and then Kingdom Hearts Lover XX uh, 358 over 7 is my other profile. 358x over 7 billboards outside on the way to Hall 358 Nation. billboards outside of Missouri. Dream drop Missouri distance. <laughs> Dream drop Missouri distance. That's lit. That's Dang, fucked. Where can the folks find you? Uh, well, you know, as per usual, they can find me on uh, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the Facebooks, not really, uh, uh, gaming platforms at Lane to Point. Um, you can also find me on my Pornhub page. Uh, it's really green, gaining a lot of traction. Uh, and what's what? It, what's it called? Lane to Point. Oh, okay. it's the same, the same handle. Okay. That's pretty easy. Or you just look up my name on Pornhub and you'll find it. <laughs> I won't um, be doing that. I'm definitely a celebrity at this point. Okay. Yeah. Lane to um, Point. Look, I, uh, look, I play a lot. I play a celebrity. lot of games. I play a lot of games on. You railroaded that bit. At every turn. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> just like you railroaded me, asking you to ask Jordan what I was, what my outro was. You're right. <laughs> Uh, uh, <laughs> um, and Is that's it. And Morty. I don't know. That could have been. God, I hope not. Now, <laughs> savage guys. <laughs> I'm real proud that we were able to to do this, to complete a podcast yeah. episode, to uh, have some fun conversation, and just spend some time together. But it has to come to an end, just like our lives. Uh, okay. What does that mean? That's it. <laughs> You're scaring me. Where can they find us as a union? That's right. As a union. As a union? You can find our civil union at uh, it's not so subtle dot com. <laughs> you can also find us on Twitter and Instagram and Twitch even, all at it's not so subtle. And Fossbook. And Fossbook. That's right. What if they want to send us an email? Well, if they want to send us an email, they probably should. And if they're going to send one, the only place that it can really go is it's not so subtle at gmail dot com. That's the one. That's the one. Um, guys, just send us something. Anything. Look, I won't beg. Because the one beg. thing that I... There's two things I'll never do. One is ask for permission, and two is beg for forgiveness. So right now, I'm telling you, just send us something. I'm demanding you to do Look, it. Look, just say something. Say anything. I'm going to ask you, and I'm going to have a request for you. <laughs> and I'm going to ask gonna you, demand it. and then I'm going to demand it, but that's going to come last. That's right. First I'll ask you, and then I'll request. All right. for my request. <laughs> so, honestly, please, uh, if you have something to say about, maybe we talked about Black Panther last week. There's a lot of new movies coming out. There's a lot of Oscar buzz going on. We're going to watch Seven Samurai next week. Say something. Send us the synopsis of the Kingdom Hearts stories. Uh, Send us I'd your interpretation of Kingdom Hearts. Not even the storyline, just what you think it all means. Or tell us to stop if you hate us talking about Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> but we're all passionate about it, so that won't happen. So it won't happen. Off, Look, they, they, I will I will actively f- argue with someone that doesn't have the ability to argue back on air uh, if they say that we should stop talking about Kingdom okay. Hearts. Email us in, and we'll dismantle your arguments, no matter what One they are. Piece by piece. No, I'll get out a fucking whiteboard that I'll put right, <laughs> right here, and I'll, we'll just, like, write out, like... We'll have a Venn Part diagram. One. Yeah. I, I would love to just roast people and take apart yeah. their arguments. Challenge us. But, I like to be challenged. But first, they have to contact us. That's right. And yeah. and they're not going to do that if we promise that we're going to roast them. Hit them with the email address again. Yeah, one last time. At it's not so subtle at gmail.com. That's the one. Gmail.com. 
Listen, you guys roast me for messing up, but you put the at at the beginning That's for right. no reason. Look, it's not so subtle at <laughs> gmail.com. They, everyone knows the proper email format. That's right. I don't even need to say it. We can just put it up. <laughs> I don't have a graphic for that. I Fuck! Could, I could, maybe. You could. You do now. You could just... Just now do, do like like uh, the the reading rainbow where it just kind of like shoots across reading the reading rainbow. rainbow. I don't know if I can do that, but well, you'll find a way. <laughs> Listen, guys, Look, time's up. I'm gonna ask and I'm gonna request and then I'm gonna demand that you do that. No, all right, all right. This has been not so subtle. Until next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>